I just want to preface this video by saying the main video I react to in this video was already deleted by Sneeko off his channel. He's trying to hide the truth. He's trying to sweep it under the rug, and I do not want to let him do that. I know it's long, but please hang around for the context. It's important. I put a lot of work into it, and I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you. I went insane during the filming of this video. You people give nothing. Nothing. Step your game up. I'm coming for your subs. I'm coming for your views, bro. But look at his face. He just took a massive fucking L. He should not be smiling that hard here. I think that it's like a disease that can infect everybody. Is social media. Wake up! Yo, you know who's an L man's? Who? Brandon Buckingham. He literally threatened to R word my girlfriend. Bro, literally said, I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. Literally said that. And he said, I'm gonna R word your girlfriend, bro. He said that? Yes. Word for word. I'm going to R word your girlfriend on his fucking public Instagram story. Lorandon Luckingham. But I just want to let you know, chat, that it's fucking predictable. Trust me, I'm getting somewhere with this. Nico Kendi Belindazi, born September 8th, 1998, otherwise better known as Sneeko, is an American YouTuber who's known for his commentary and motivational videos. A creator with a polarized audience split between love and hate, and someone who's also one of the realists on this entire website. So, who is Sneeko? I'm certainly not one of those good people. Matter of fact, I'm straight up kind of an asshole. I'm an extremely self-involved, insecure, and overcompensating wannabe that constantly speaks about things I barely know about. And when people speak to me, I don't listen. I just wait for my own turn to speak. I literally always put myself before other people. And it's because I've been conditioned to believe that for no reason at all, I'm better than other people. No matter how many glaringly obvious flaws and obvious personality faults I carry, I'm still going to believe this. Even though I get lonely all the time, I feel worthless, sometimes I look in the mirror and just despise the person that I'm looking at. The thing is, we all know this stuff too, but it's easier to stay ignorant than it is to be a truly good person. Because if I die today, people would just be like, mm, meh, meh. Because I still haven't detached myself from that ignorance and that arrogance. I'm everything that I complain about and more. There's no point in me trying to justify it. But the final step of grievance is acceptance. And it seems like a lot of you are still at the bottom of the stairs. I want to show you that I haven't actually, before I go, that when you say you miss the old Sneeko, that you're just nostalgic for no reason. Seven years ago. <laughs> and it's still doing the same bro. I'm saying the same shit. I missed the, you switched up. What happened to you? You lost it. I say the same shit. The same shit with the same mic. The same shit. For the people who say you missed the old me or like I switched up or like he's lost it, he's going insane. Let's watch this. I'm narcissistic as fuck. And to be perfectly honest, I'm being perfectly honest. I'm literally the most cocky person I know. My problem is that I think I'm right no matter what. My opinion has to be the correct one and I'm 100% sure of it. And when someone finally does manage to get me to shut my fat lips for a moment so they can interject a point that completely demolishes my annoying beliefs, I go in full on denial mode. Nope, 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 you're incorrect. We have rights, you know. I won't admit that I'm wrong. It's hard to believe I don't report for Fox News. Instead, I either try to change the subject or I say something funny to make it seem like I wasn't being serious. That is one of the most arrogant things a person can do. For some reason, I think if I admit to being wrong, I'll be less of a man or whatever. I don't really even know. The thing is, I still know that isn't true. Admitting defeat when you know you lost makes you more of a man or whatever the hell that means. Along with being this narcissistic, I'm annoyingly stubborn. Whenever I discuss something of importance with another person, I jam my points in over and over because I'm right. It's all me. My opinions matter. This is correct and you're an idiot. Coney 2012. So eventually, I just look like a complete asshole. Just a full on asshole. The thing is, no one has really seen the side of me to the fullest extent except for my family. I know how much of a prick I look like when I go full out, so the side of me is never revealed in public. It stays in the comforts of my home where people are forced to accept me. But over time, I've seen how much people hate being around someone who consistently thinks he's right and won't stop until he is, so I mostly keep it to myself. The side of me is a maturity thing too. Right now it's in full swing, but in five years, I hope it'll be gone. I piss even myself off sometimes. When you see rappers or basketball players who think they're the most important and special people in the world because children give them their endless overwhelming fanboy support. That's what I feel like all the time. I think I'm so special and better than everyone else because I think I'm smarter. Just picture how narcissistic that is. The side of me is my alter ego and he's named the Sneeko. Chad, I just want to bully this guy. Like, <laughs> bring bullying back. Bullying is necessary. Part of being a great comedian is being a no bullshit teller of the truth. Now let's get started. Oh God. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Yes, it is. I'm looking forward to this. We had an action-packed show, but mm -hmm. you saw what I'm sure is gonna be the title. You see what I'm sure is gonna be the thumbnail. 
We got the footage of it right now. Brendan Buckingham runs up with an opened bottle of mayonnaise mm. and shoots me in the side of the face. What a great bit, huh? It probably took a lot of hours <laughs> in the writing room, Leo. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were doing a bit where I'm not sure what I am. Am I a war hero? <laughs> yeah. And then I'm in a wheelchair, too. So mm-hmm. I think Lorenzo's angle is that I'm a retarded kid. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember a left kick at Nico. But then the officers see this and they acquaint Brandon Buckingham with the cold brick floor of 6th Street. <laughs> Yes. Maybe reacquaint. I don't know what he's been doing out there. Yeah. I'm not sure how impressive or whoa, Danny got punked this is because mm. it would have been literally as difficult to do this if they'd gone up and done it to a real retarded guy in a wheelchair. Yeah, seriously. I don't even think it was there was a filming thing. I don't think they filmed it. He's got well. a mic on. <laughs> I'm a mayor, this man. What's up, bitch? What's good? What's up? Don't touch me, Nico. Don't touch me. I'll fuck you up, Nico. What's good? Nico? Nico, touch me again. What are you filming, bitch? Stop it! I'm done. Hands down. Give it back. All right, I'm good. <laughs> hey, he was shoving me. I'm telling you, I'm not resisting. All right, Nico. I'm chilling, bro. Hey, Danny Mullen breathes with gays. Danny Mullen is an insecure 31-year-old failed stand-up comedian with a god complex who blacklisted me from working with several creators on YouTube starting way back in November of 2020. I'm sure the title of this video is Danny Explains Himself or Danny Responds. Ian has, in the meeting we just had about two hours ago, brought into light some very significant misunderstandings and some very significant blind spots in my information that now I'm starting to see how Brandon could think I'm a colossal asshole and maybe even evil. Like, I just cannot imagine, hats off to Brandon, to getting off unscathed after mayonnaising me, kicking Nico, posting about my girlfriend. I just don't think I could have pulled that off. I'll say that, again, I've resorted to these sort of tactics so many times. The sunfish, the Mm -hmm. fuck this guy, the Mm -hmm. fuck that guy, talking shit. I deserve this. Sure. After this whole thing broke out, I've been actually feeling some feelings of warmth toward Brandon. It's not... All negativity is gone. It's I mean, I've been a little sad that some fans have been really pissed off at me. And if I saw him, I would give him a hug, talk it over, go to lunch with him. Yeah, guys, we're completely different people off the camera. It's an act, guys. Yeah. I get, If there's a nugget of truth in something, I put gasoline and lighter fluid and then drop a match on it and make it into this big, this big fucking performance. Yeah. So. <laughs> So your weekend, did you cry? I cried with my girl, absolutely. So, you know, I, but yes, we we finally did. She did come over because she said that she, you know, figured that, you know, it would be too cruel to not, you know, console me. And yes, and that's when I did cry. So, uh, yeah, I was bummed out. And then, dude, thank God for my fucking girlfriend. I started feeling like shit about the whole situation. Her and I were cuddling on the bed and I did start crying a little bit. She's like, oh, I had to get up just some tears coming down nothing too serious but i had to take a long walk around Mm -hmm. the neighborhood and just Mm -hmm. think fuck man i'm still a little shaken up from this weekend but uh, of course me too yeah man i we want to get back to comedy dude i mean can we just make you laugh for god's sakes danny yeah people want to know in the chat what's going on with brandon buckingham yeah uh, um nothing man yeah i I mean do you like anything (laughs) pussy when's the last time you talked to him you've been begging for forgiveness you're a pussy i texted him again like in the fall just sort of trying to like bury everything and just reach out like hey man i'm sorry how that all went maybe we can make amends or like put this behind us nope and I didn't hear back from him. Of course not. And he hates you that much. Yep. He doesn't seem to like me. I, I, I kind of forget <laughs> about the specific allegations, but the gist of it that I remember from when I watched uh-huh. this video about you was... I was egotistical. And since then, I started to realize that and identify those characteristics in myself and start working on that ego mm. and dialing it back. Somebody tried to main... 
excuse me, succeeded in mayonnaising me. Her and I were cuddling on the bed and I did start crying a little bit. I cried with my girl, absolutely. Danny Mullen cried in his girlfriend's arms. I'm making these fucking kids cry. I'm blinking, like low key blinking tears away. Our image is everything. If you pay attention, you'll see the lengths people go to maintain this. Virtually everything you do is an anticipation of how someone else is going to react. We spend time crafting this image of ourselves with filters, filters music quotes, and edgy, edgy tweets. tweets. It's pretty much like making a Sims character. The reality is most of us are going to spend our lives wondering how everyone else is going to see us. Instead of improving ourselves for ourselves. Social media has taken over our lives to the point where it's a second reality. Attention is literally a currency. It's all a performance. Sneeko realizes how much bullshit he says in his videos not because it's truthful, but because of how people are going to perceive him when he pushes his narrative. We want to seem special. We want to be cooler than we really are. He is always the winner in his videos. I'm always going to find a nice way to tie it up at the end so that I learned a lesson and it's all good. Sneeko constantly makes fun of people he's better than, when in actuality, I'm guilty of all the stuff I'm criticizing. He's completely addicted to social media. He's a bot. He watches other men have sex with his girlfriend. He's a pathological liar. He has a massive ego. I care what strangers think about me online. He makes up fake rape allegations to make himself feel better about being a cuck. He's a beta male. And after nine years of desperately trying to become famous, he has learned one thing. Follow the trends. Sneeko will manipulate you with fear, or what he calls the blue pill, and then offer answers to make you feel better. Fear is an idea successful people use to separate you from them. In other words, he convinces you everyone else is a liar but him. So you'll watch his shitty content, thus breaking free from the matrix and getting red-pilled. Which is really just a cheap scheme to get you to buy his pointless $50 a month online course. Does that make any sense? Good and bad is something that Sneeko never has to rationalize. He has become arrogant about his ignorance. Honesty is something Sneeko doesn't respect, and he'll offer a million reasons why it's never his fault. It's society's fault. It's the Matrix. But He's the one that's different. People suck up to him because of his subscriber count. He's used to people folding under the pressure of his fame. But in reality, he's a failed comedian that uses mental gymnastics and Jackie Chan-esque dodging laser maneuvers to slither under the responsibility of his actions. Weeks ago, Sneeko was upset that I disrespected him and didn't beg for forgiveness afterwards. So he made up fake rape threat allegations to try to ruin my name online. So why would he do this? His ego was so hurt by what I said that it festered in his mind and culminated in him spreading lies about me to make himself feel better. I triggered the PTSD he has of seeing his girlfriend get railed legs up missionary style at a sex party and he just had to get back at me somehow. He can't face the fact that he's a cuck so instead of accepting it he painted me as a clout chasing school shooter rapist. Maybe I should cry more and say I was raped. So without further ado I present to you the dark truth about Sneeko. And isn't it ironic? I've seen her huh? other men. They would look at my girlfriend and fold. Real talk. I was literally having PTSD watching that. I was like having war flash. <gasps> and he said, I'm going to R word your girlfriend, bro. Everything else is dishonest now. So I'm just trying to be overly honest, man. Imagine seeing the girl you love get fucked. He, no, he literally threatened to R word my girlfriend. For all the guys who were falsely accused of shit they didn't do by bitches who were lying like you, go to jail right now. Feel bad. Think about all the women who actually got essayed. I mean, I'm literally, I had PTSD about this. Like I had bad dreams about this. They're not trying to run a train on my girl. They're saying that because they felt disrespected and they tried to say the most disrespectful thing to me. You see how I'm getting emotional right now? Like how like I'm blinking, like low key blinking tears away. My anxiety and I'm my mental health and blah, 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 blah. Why would you say some stupid baby? And people have lost basic respect. And I think he realized his mistake. When we talked on the phone, I think he realized his mistake. I don't think he mean what he said. Am I gay? Nah, no, I, bro, what? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Buckethead yeah. Show, Buckethead. <laughs> what? Today, I'm going to address the lying manipulative beta male that goes by the name of Sneeko, or as I like to call him, little old Sneeko. Now, you might know him as someone who's been blowing up the past two months, desperately clinging to the ball sack of Andrew Tate, suckling at the tea to fame with his festering mouth, and trying his best to copy the formula that has turned Andrew Tate into the most talked about thing on the internet. Why am I making this video? Well, I've only ever made content like this once before, but special times call for special measures. 
I have foolproof evidence that Sneeko is a fraud, as well as a pathological liar, and represents everything he hates in this world. He's a dishonest, grifting, blue pill taking, beta male cuck that has falsely accused me of threatening to what? rape his girlfriend in an attempt to cancel me and ruin my life. Now, I'm going to be breaking down all the foul lies he spread about me, most importantly, the one where he uses false accusations of sexual assault for his own personal gain to defame me and unjustly turn a close friend of mine against me live on his YouTube channel. Yo, you know who's an L man's? Who? Brandon Buckingham. Oh, yeah. That guy that. sucks. I'm gonna ra bro, literally said, I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. Yeah. Literally said that. This dude said he is going to R word my girlfriend. Bro, yeah. nothing warrants saying I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. That's some school shooter vibes, bro. Yeah, he's That's some guy. white boy school shooter shit. Bro. Saying you're gonna R word my girlfriend? You said that? Yes. Yes. That's a little crazy, yeah. Literally, word for word, I'm going to R word your girlfriend on his fucking public Instagram story. What? Hey, you seem a bit tense there, big guy. Unfortunately, you don't get to do that, Sneeko. You can't just say that I threatened to what? rape your girlfriend. That's not how this works. Ooh. Rape accusations are not pawns you get to use to make people look bad because they've spoken ill of you online. Are you not smart enough to understand that? Do you have a god complex? Do you really think I'm stupid enough to roll over and allow you to say these lies without defending my name? You must really buy into your own hype and think you're invincible. Now, those listening at home did you hear what he said word for word i'm going to r word your girlfriend on his fucking public instagram story he said i said word for word i'm going to r word your girlfriend and claims this happened on my public instagram story how deluded can you be to think you'd get away with this public instagram story Come on, man. I just need you to bear with me through the context and get to the end of the video so you can see just how scummy this narcissistic little child is. So buckle up. All the context and the build up to the end of the video is very important. It's very hilarious. And I couldn't be more excited to clear my name Finally, I want to say this. He did these long winded videos about the situation over an hour of him talking about it on two different streams that I'm aware of. So I feel it's necessary. I address it in a long winded articulate fashion. I fear if I made this a 10 minute video like I wanted to, people would complain too much about me picking and choosing clips and not providing adequate context, so I will do my best to make things long with proper context. And in the description will be the links to all the streams I'm referencing, and I implore you to go watch them for yourself and draw your own conclusions. Also, I waited six weeks since the what? rape threat allegations to make this video for one reason and one reason only. I knew people were going to call me a clout chaser. Sneeko was blowing up like crazy and people were going to think I had ulterior motives. But seeing as the last video I posted has now become my most viewed video of all time, I think now is the perfect time to address the situation and finally put it to rest. Let's start at the beginning so we can have full context and full clarity. Everything I say will be 100% truth to my knowledge and I will supply evidence to the best of my ability. You have my word and I hope you trust me. I used to be a fan of Sneeko way back before he cosplayed as an alpha male. He used to make philosophical videos about life, people, society, and I really enjoyed them. I thought they were well put together, well edited, and I respected him. However, somewhere along the line, things went south for our little alpha male. Clouded by the pursuit of fame, money, and women, he turned into his shadow self, or perhaps who he's been this entire time. I don't know him well enough to cast that judgment. Fast forward to April of 2021. I meet Sneeko for the first time in Las Vegas at Steezy Kane's birthday party, and my initial reaction was shock. I felt he was an egomaniac that viewed himself as better than everyone. You could tell he thought he was the coolest guy around, and I remember our first interaction vividly. He treated me like some fanboy piece of shit because I was giving him props about his videos. We're all in this penthouse together celebrating Steezy's birthday, and this guy's attitude is insane. There's a ton of YouTubers there, and from my point of view, it was very clear Sneeko was only interested in being cool with the big ones. But maybe he was going through something, could have been a bad day, I don't know but he really rubbed me the wrong way. From Sneeko's perspective, he claims he felt a certain type of way about me because I jumped in the Bellagio fountain and apparently had a Nerf gun fight. 
I, I peeped that shit right away. I met him for the first time at Steezy's birthday in Vegas. Um, and then this dude shows up and I'm like, he's like, let's jump in the fountain. And I'm like, okay, this is some white people shit. Like I was there like partying with strippers and shit like that. Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Vegas, baby, woo! And he's like, I'm just jumping the fountain. And I'm like, okay. And then he's like, let's have a Nerf war. And I'm like, I'm 23. And so like, that's an example of somebody who will do anything for clout, do anything for attention, and is not based in reality because they desire attention so much. I'm gonna jump in the fountain. Okay. You can hear it in his voice. He thinks he's so cool. He's big bad Sneeko. Ooh. So the story behind everything he just said is that a YouTuber named Reckless Ben had asked everyone at the penthouse to jump in the Bellagio fountain for a video to mock Danny Mullen for claiming I was copying him. It wasn't my idea and it wasn't for my video, but even if it was, why would you care? And as far as the Nerf gun fight, that is completely fabricated. I don't know if anyone there can corroborate what he said about some kind of Nerf gun fight, but I wasn't there, I had nothing to do with a Nerf gun fight, but I wish I did, because honestly, Nerf guns are pretty rad. But let's move on, we're getting somewhere, I promise, it's just gonna take a minute. Five months later, I'm in New York City with Hooligan Christian and Ricky. Hooli decides to link with Andrew Tate's sycophantic clone, and I am not jazzed about it at all. But Hooli is my guy, and we're there for content, so I come in with a clean slate trying to give my friend's friend a fair shake. I'm filming for my channel out there, and when we link with him, to my surprise, he's hopping into frame, talking into my mic and being a lot cooler than when we first met. I'm like, shit, maybe this guy's all right. We spent a few hours hanging out and it made me think maybe I had the wrong idea. He still very clearly was full of himself. I get the impression he's the kind of guy that likes the smell of his own farts or something like that. I imagine him like admiring his shit in the toilet, but you know, that's all speculation. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I really think that. I think he does that. It's speculation, but I, I do think he does that. But still, he was making some attempt to treat me kindly, and I really appreciated that. The next day, we go out to dinner. Hooli invites Sneeko and his girlfriend. We have a nice meal. She had some interesting vibes, to say the least, that Rick and I picked up on, but that was that. The trip ends. We go our separate ways. We definitely weren't friends. We never followed each other on any social media, never had any DMs, didn't exchange phone numbers, nothing. I never privately talked to him again after this. My opinion at this point was, yeah, this dude is super full of himself, but he made a slight attempt to be cool with me, so I'll reciprocate that energy. No beef. I don't want static with him or anything. We're cordial. I'll start watching his content again. Whatever. Boom. It's June 2022, and I haven't talked to him in about nine months. I get signed to Happy Punch promotions and I'm reaching out to every content creator I've had an interaction with and seeing if they're interested in fighting. I reached out to everyone from Canel Joseph to Tommy G to Deadrian Harding to Jacob Markovich. I was seeing who was interested in getting in the ring with me and if they weren't interested in fighting against me, I was still trying to get them a fight with a person of their choice. Keem can corroborate this. It wasn't about finding just me a fight. I was trying to get people signed. I was playing matchmaker. So I shoot a text to Keem to see if he'd sign Sneeko and he's not interested. Now to explain why he isn't interested, Arrested. I have to go on a bit of a tangent. I don't know if you know this, but Sneeko did some work for Keemstar a few years back and things went sour. Keem needed a narrator for a letter that was written by FouseyTube for a drama alert episode. Sneeko reached out and although he claimed to not like Keem, he still asked if he could do it because he wanted the opportunity to help his career. Keem gave him this opportunity, unsure if he'd do a good job or blow it, and Sneeko ended up doing a very poor job with it. It was rushed, monotone, and not worth releasing. Keem messaged him this privately, stating he did a bad job and wouldn't be posting it. Then Sneeko goes off and has a little hissy fit. He leaks their private conversations in retaliation and makes an expose video on Keemstar that didn't gain the traction he wanted and make him famous, so he soon after deleted it. The reading that you did was shit, and then when I told you it wasn't good privately, privately told you it wasn't good, privately told you I'm not going to use it, you had a hissy fit like a little boy and tried to get back at Keemstar because is. you had an opportunity to be in front of 400,000 people and you blew it, but you couldn't accept the fact that you did a bad job. Instead, you tried That's to pass the, the buck yeah, on okay. me. That entire confrontation stream can be found in the description, and this isn't the only time Snako has betrayed and backstabbed someone that gave him an opportunity. If you didn't know, he briefly got a job working with Mr. Beast, but his fragile ego was so overcome with jealousy that he chose 
chose to make an expose video on him in an attempt to gain clout and prove he was better than him. That's literally the reason, to gain clout and prove he was better than him. Not because of a principle, not because he was disrespected, it was for his own self-gain. He tried to put Mr. Beast down so he could become famous. It's a little bit sick and twisted, don't you think? Watch this. What pissed me off after working with Mr. Beast is I always thought I was better at making videos, yet he's the one on track to be a top 10 YouTuber of all time. I got all jealous when he fired me and I made this hate video exposing him, and then I had to delete it when I realized that he blew up because he put in work. He actually went through the effort of doing it over and over again, and I never did. So, so what happened, context. Mr. Beast fired me and I made an exposed video and I said that he, um, he's not real in his videos and that you know, he doesn't swear and he doesn't curse and he peels. I, you know, I made like an exposed video on Mr. Beast trying to talk about the, the fraud that goes on behind the scenes. Mr. Beast might not get laid as much as I do, but money's gonna get you laid more than your looks, no cap. So of course it didn't work and he immediately deleted the video, but the damage was done. Mr. Beast had already seen it and it forever spoiled his relationship with him. Sneeko threw a million dollar opportunity away in a futile effort to gain fame and notoriety. I'm sure there's more examples of him behaving this way. I know we just had some weird static with KSI, but we don't have time for that. We got to get back to the main storyline. So Keemstar doesn't want to sign Sneeko to box. And mind you, I had told Sneeko that I could try to get him signed to fight me or to fight another opponent. I was going to try to help him get signed regardless of my benefit. Sneeko ends up messaging me saying something like, actually, he doesn't really want to box. So I reply and I quote, I got you. I hope it didn't rub you the wrong way or anything. I just thought you'd be a legitimate good opponent that I'd respect. Much love, Sneeko. He responded to me saying that by saying, Why you on my dick? Those are both direct quotes. I can't give you the screenshot because Big Bad Sneeko blocked me on Instagram. But I had written down the quotes in text messages that I had sent to my friends, so I can guarantee you those are the exact quotes. I reached out to clarify I didn't disrespect him by challenging him to a fight, and he called me a dick rider in response. And then I sat back, thought about it for a second. I was thinking, what a pompous little fucker. Here I am trying to help him and he spits in my face and treats me like a fanboy just because I was showing him respect and clarifying our relationship. He's not my friend. We're not close at all. He's just some arrogant internet guy that I barely know. It took me back to that feeling when I first met him in Vegas and I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'll show you how on your dick I can really be. Thus, I took to my Instagram story to say in a series of story posts that I'd knock him out anytime, anywhere, any rule set. I called him out on everything. I said he was a fake alpha male, a cuck, and then I said the fateful line, I'm going to pull up to New York and run a train on your girl with the boys like she wanted us to. A nasty line, I know, very harsh words, but let me elaborate on why I said that. Firstly, I don't run train on... <laughs> Firstly, I don't run trains on girls. I've never done that. I've never tagged teamed a girl with a guy. That's not something I'm into. I don't do that. It was merely an attempt to provoke him. Not a nice thing. Not something I condone doing to regular people. But, in my mind, Sneeko is not regular. He cosplays online as an alpha male. He speaks very negatively of women in the spirit of truth and puts on this bullshit macho man persona he claims is really him, when in reality, it couldn't be farther from the truth. I was taking a shot at his pride. Think of an Andrew Tate dick rider. That's Sneeko. You're supposed to be an alpha male. You act like an alpha male. That's what's gotten him to where he is today. I was hitting him where it hurts, right in the ego. At the time, Sneeko was in an open relationship with his girlfriend. None of my business, I know, but he willingly admitted this to the internet. Not only that, but he admitted to being a cuck, meaning he's watched his girlfriend have sex right in front of him with other men. <laughs> You said something to the nature of whatever happens, happens. What? Yeah, um, so so we go in there with the mentality that whatever happens inside that party just stays at the party. Like, yeah. And so I saw her, I've, I've seen her fuck other men. And it's just like, that you was- you seen it? Yeah, I saw like, oh, uh, no, like I literally can't, right- I can't be no okay, so Literally an arm's length away. And I'm not making this up. He said it himself. It came from the Sneeko's mouth. I knew this and I used it as ammo. So watch this clip. It's really one of my favorites. I get such a fucking kick out of it. Imagine, see, imagine seeing the girl you love, like, get fucked. Get fucked. You love her? Yeah, I do. I love, yeah, I love her. I love my, my queen. wifey, my queen. And you allowed the love of your life to get, to get fucked. 
by another man. What happened? This nigga, this nigga, <laughs> let, he, this nigga so allowed his girl to get fucked so what's by up? niggas. Oh, and he's on, watching. Hold on, let me, let, let me, hold let, on. Hey, Y'all hey. screaming. I kind of want to hear it's him talk. Like Everybody's so loud. Like that. That. If I'm able to go and have one night stands and be have an open relationship and she can only go on dates, this is a place where she could exercise the open relationship. Like, it, it should be fair that she can take other dick if I'm fucking other pussy. Honor. If it's going to happen, I might as well see it, supervise it, make sure everything's Wait, okay. what? No, you didn't have to jump to that conclusion. Well, I don't, I, it's, <laughs> worse. I'm saying right now. it's worse if I, if she, it happens behind my back. Like, I don't want it. It's like, not, but y'all are both knowing that it's happening. So it's never behind <laughs> your back anymore. You just got to know. I got to see it. It don't need to be literally in front of you. It was literally like this so far away from me. Can you play like, how close times. was it? That he, he, right, we're on the same bed. I was with his girl. He was with my girl. You like, was right here. on the bed? Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> You're odd. You sat on the bed while she got fucked. I I was there too. I mean, we were, we was both. Oh, I got up. I you, got, you you were you fucking his girl? I I was not fucking with her. Now. So you just sat there Indian style with your y'all both just sat. I was literally having PTSD watching that. I was like having war flash. <gasps> like I just started. Could not do it. Could not do it. So what position? No. It was missionary. Yeah, missionary no. legs up. It like, was missionary legs, legs up. up. Legs up, yeah. Oh, no. That's, that's such an outrage. No. So was he staring at her, like, in her eyes? Yeah, like, deep eye contact. Oh, no. Deep eye contact. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. The side and blue. And she deep? grabbed it. She's like, I want you to fuck me. I was like, whoa. What? Whoa, whoa. whoa. With a toe like this? I, mean, I literally I had PTSD about this. Like I had bad dreams about this for like a week. Like I didn't know I was fucking like, what? So we, we showed up to the swinger party and everything and everybody like, it, they're having drinks and then all of a sudden snap, everyone's naked. And then they're fucking on the floor, on the bed, on Who's the couch. Everyone? How many people was there? There's like 40 people. There's, That's there's like, too there's many There's like, there's like people. Maybe, maybe 30, 30 to 40 That's people. That's still too many. People like rotate. And so while I'm like hitting it from the back, he lays down on the floor and starts liquor her. But think about like the logistics Your of that. Dick is that close? Think to that? Of, exactly. Think about the logistics. Like his head is like under. It's like six inches. Like his eyebrows are like tickling the bottom, and I have to like move, like go like that, so I don't make contact because his eyebrows are like tickling. <laughs> you feel what I'm? I'm like here with it. Like I'm trying to not touch his head, and he he was completely okay with it. And my girl's right here, and she's like, eh. and I'm like, oh yo, I'm like like feeling traumatic thoughts, like seeing her. With another person, it's a lot. It's a lot, to, I th but I think it's something everybody should do. What? Just to test. No. I, no. You know what? You know no. what? I, I think you should. I may smack a nigga. I, I said the same shit before. It's gonna be a mad, mad, angry, mad, naked niggas in that bitch, <laughs> bro. Like you don't want to be that couple. You know, Why you don't want to be that. Toxic, I'll be that man. couple. Because wait, what? You don't want to be what couple? It's a, it's a sex party. Whatever happens I there, just happens I just won't there. go. It, it felt like somebody was like taking something from me. Like someone was violating my property. Who's proposing this? Is this you or Both her? of us, both of us. Yeah, both of us. It was like a mutual Now, does she, does she feel the same way when you're fucking somebody else in front of her? Nah, she likes it. She likes oh, watching wow. that. Yeah, but I don't, I don't even, we've been to four. I've never fucked somebody else at one of these parties. So why, so why, Wait, so, so why, why not? Oh, 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 that's, that's, the, that's the part, it's my problem. Like that, at that point I realized no, like, that's why, why I think everyone not? should do it. That's toxic masculinity. Like I should be able to get past that. It's, it's, it's not, just sex. It's just you should not fuck your girl. Yeah. It's no, just, it's a sex party, bro. It's normal. It's just sex, bro. One so you haven't entry. fucked anybody at these parties. No. Nah. What you're saying is you willingly hold hands, walk girl into room of niggas, and go. Well, fuck that's them. not the only thing that happened. Like the first time, it was three pumps, and I'm like, I can't do it. Like this is too much. He's like, oh, okay. It's like so why if you keep you keep going back, but you not fucking nobody. So the, okay, we went. We well, okay. So it's, it's more than just that. Like sometimes I'll be fucking her, and then like women will slide in and start sucking her titty and stuff like that. Like some girl will like grab me too. It's for her pleasure as well. She like likes dick, you know. Oh, she likes other niggas' dicks. She likes penis, period. But no, I, get I that, like but pussy, you, period. I get that, know? but you could specifically just give her more penis. What I'm saying is she specifically want other penises. I mean, she can go without it. Like after the first party when I said like, yo, Sneakle, like it was, you're not listen, listen, question. after the first, she said she didn't have to, like, she's like, I don't, no, it's okay. We don't need to do this anymore. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So why, why go why, back? Yeah. Because, okay, the second time, which is two days ago, like, it wasn't as bad. It wasn't, I two saw Two days it. ago, it's crazy. Yeah, so you're, so you're, you're opening up more to this I'm, one. I'm less traumatized now, yeah. That's good. I like that one. That one's good. So it seemed like his girl has some experience in the train department. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And when I was out at dinner with Sneeko and his girlfriend in New York, she was flirting with everyone very hard, making it entirely apparent she was fair game and was seemingly down to hook up. But none of us reciprocated this behavior. We didn't flirt back. We didn't give her any vibes. And Sneeko himself claimed that that night they ended up going home with two random girls they met at that very restaurant. So clearly they were on the prowl for some action. It weirded me out. I didn't like it. But to each their own. I don't judge. Well, maybe I judge Sneeko a little bit because he's just 
just a complete scumbag, but that's beside the point. Well, I guess actually it is the point. Let's carry on. How are you gonna be an alpha male and a cuck at the same time, Snako? Your bald daddy Andrew Tate would not approve of that one, would he? You should have checked in with him, Buster. Now, who is this girlfriend that is cucking Snako? Her name is Maria. I've met her in person, and in my opinion, she's a hoe. Just my opinion, though. And to clarify, she is a public figure. So let's look at some clips that Sneeko has personally posted of her on the internet. Can you tell him to subscribe to Sneeko? I'm taking her away. Yeah, subscribe to Sneeko. He's, you, he's 9K away. Nine, are you pooping right now? No. Okay. Yeah, but, hey, ow! Oh, what the f- Damn, bro, you call him a girlfriend, they could do whatever the fuck they want now. No more respect. Watch, you still pay for the flight, the hotel, the dinner, and she still is gonna complain about Instagram DMs. It's just it's just how it goes. You just gotta figure out like how to, your priorities, how to deal with it. You just can't let it affect you. Whoa! Oh my god! Wow! Why are you getting naked in here, the fuck? We broke up one day after this picture was taken. The dilemma for me was deciding when the stress of a relationship outweighs the love. How do you know when you're just better off by yourself? She stuck with me forever. Never. Ever. Try some shit again. Oh, no. Stuck forever. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my God. You wanted this, right? You don't need that here. Shit, yeah, I do. Maria, where are you going? Ooh, Sneeko, where is she going? She's probably going to take another man's penis inside of her as you've watched her do before. Man, that shit's weird. Yeah, and I was, you know, I've been fine with it. You saw it go down and you were- I've seen, I've seen it happen Did it, does it turn you on? No, not at all. <laughs> no. The whole time it's like, man, this fucking whore, bro. Look at her. Disrespectful. Really? But no, and I, I'm not, I, I have no cuck. I have no cuck part of me, bro. Oh, okay, okay. Nah. Like, people call me that because I go to the swinger party, yeah, for real, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. the shit literally, I had to, like, I got, like, PTSD, like, nightmares about the shit. Oh, for I can real. imagine, yeah. Yeah, for, I got, after the first time seeing that, yeah. like, I had literally had nightmares. If you think about it, there is no reason, really, why I should feel scared that my girlfriend is fucking other people. There is no real, the fear is that she's gonna leave you to go to another person. But at the end of the day, sex is just an action. It really is, right? Like you attach all these emotions and connections to it, but it, it so if you can separate that and get over that fear, and she sees me do that and allow that to happen, then she's gonna understand. But she's getting fucked. This man is a full-fledged phony. So yeah, I was provoking him, and I had no intention of doing anything to his girlfriend whatsoever. I was just provoking him. Sneeko himself admits he knows this, and I'll show that clip now. They're not trying to run a train on my girl. They're saying that because they felt disrespected, and they tried to say the most disrespectful thing to me. Bang. That's pretty telling. He said himself, he knows I didn't mean it. I was just trying to get a reaction out of him. He's smart enough to realize that, so it's really crazy this devolved into a fucking rape what? allegation situation. But I guess that's how low you have to stoop when you can't defend your honor like a man. You have to operate off lies and deceit and literal rape allegations. Did I take it too far? Maybe. Do I think it's good to behave how I did in the situation? Not really. But the guy is the most arrogant dickhead I'd ever met, and I wanted to hit him where it hurts. And to my surprise, Sneeko FaceTimes me literally crying like he had just seen the worst shit in his life. He tells me he thought we were friends. Why would I say something like that to him? He was just joking with me. Please delete the story. He literally begged me to delete the story. And all the while, I'm in shock. I'm literally speechless, taken back. Like, this is the fucking alpha male guy that's saying all this crazy shit and talking a big game. He's got tears rolling down his face because I said some stuff about his girlfriend and said I'd knock him out. Like, what? You're like, you're crying? Are you, are you serious? Are you trolling me? What? Where's the tough guy persona? What is this? It, I start feeling bad. I'm like, what have I done? What did I just say to this guy? You know, he's playing into my empathy. He's like tricking me. He's making me feel really guilty and really bad because what I did say was really far. But given how he portrays himself, I thought it was warranted. I thought he asked for it. I thought it was beef. And then now I'm looking into this little kid's eyes as he's like crying and making a fucking whimpering mess of himself. I would never say shit like that to a normal person because I know it would hurt them and make them really sad. I knew it would hurt Sneeko 
show, but I wanted to make him angry. He was an alpha male. Let's go. Let's fucking lock horns. I didn't think he was going to respond by bawling his eyes out. So he caught me really off guard with the crying routine. I felt like I had fucked up. I was feeling a lot of guilt. I immediately adhered to his wishes and deleted all the stories I had put up and posted new ones stating that I wanted the fans to leave him alone and that the beef was over, but we weren't going to be cool. I said I knew what I said. I know words have consequences. I'm going to stand by what I said, but essentially don't harass him. Don't give him a hard time. And in that time frame, I was like, he didn't deserve it. Like, I, I really did feel bad, truly. I, I wasn't feeling good. And I didn't apologize to him because I was shook. I was just like so shocked. I've never seen Sneeko act that way. You know, he's got this fucking routine he runs. And when I interacted with him in real life, he's always trying to sun everyone. He's so fucking cool. He's alpha. He's tough. But when he called me, he was broken down. He was upset. And I did feel really bad. He played into my empathetic nature and successfully manipulated me. But in classic Sneeko fashion, he had to switch up. See, if he would have stopped at this point he had me beat I was the asshole at this point. He could have ran with the fact that it was just a joke that I misinterpreted, albeit it still would have been a really bad joke at a really bad time, but he could have painted me as a lunatic, someone who overreacted, someone who said too much. I mean, it wasn't going to hurt my reputation that bad because telling someone to get off your dick when they're, you're clarifying their relationship is not a very smart thing to do, but he was winning at this point. So I wake up from a little power nap to a FaceTime, and as I answer, I'm caught off guard because I see Sneeko is pointing a camera at me and I'm on stream. So I'm approaching the conversation from the angle of, I just made this kid cry, I feel bad about what I said in a way, and we're as cool as we can be given all the fucked up shit I said. He cried to me, he said there was no beef. In my mind, it's like, shit's very weird, but like, there's not supposed to be beef. I get that I said that horrible shit and we're not cool, but it's not like there's this crazy animosity. He didn't want to smoke, like he backed down. But midway through this conversation, I'm starting to wonder like, where's the sad Sneeko? I get the vibe, it's like he's confronting me now. It was very confusing. I really did not know what to make of it, so I didn't apologize to him on the stream. I just kind of tried to figure out where his head was at and if we had beef or not. If you watch the full call, you can tell how confused I am. Yeah, what up, Brandon? Yeah. Yo, so um, I was talking to my chat about what happened. There's no beef, bro. I don't care. Uh, good luck in the fight and everything. Dude. What do you want to say? I was hella tight. I thought like we had some fucking weird animosity beef shit. Uh, I guess I just misread what you said. Fucking You're a comedian, bro. How the fuck did you not think that I was telling a joke? Well, because we, first of all, we, I haven't seen you or talk, I haven't talked to you in like 10 months, right? Like, we, 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 we don't really keep up with each other like that. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like that, that same, uh, energy of like, um, like supporting you and fucking with you just flipped to the other side. Yeah, just, just like, don't do that again. Don't do that again. <laughs> I mean, well, obviously, <laughs> obviously. He switched up completely from calling me off stream to calling me on stream. He's crying, he's sobbing off stream, then he calls me on stream and he's like trying to don't do that again. So after this little bullshit bait and switch routine, I decide I'm gonna go watch the stream from the beginning and figure out like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And that's something we'll do right now. Watch the stream as much as we can without getting bored to death. And I'll be responding to all the bullshit he says. So the stream is called Making an Example Out of YouTubers and the thumbnail is Sneeko smoking on his ops, AKA smoking on my ashes, which is a very, very far cry from the teary eyed pleas to stop picking on him that he was giving me just an hour before. Look at his smug fucking smile on the thumbnail. In this video, he's addressing three beefs at once. His beef with Monica Hernandez, Hamza, and myself. Let's get into this breakdown and see his manipulation first. <laughs> The other YouTuber I want to make an example out of is Brandon Buckingham. He's an up-and-coming YouTuber. All respect to him. I still think he's funny. Like, we don't really have real beef. There's no reason for me to fight him. So this is very important. Everything me and I said about Sneeko has already been said at this point. I don't say anything mean to him again after this stream. So this reaction you see in the stream is his immediate reaction to the bad shit I said about him. And that's important to keep in mind because he's insisting that we don't have real beef. He even says all respect to him, as in me. Keep this in your mind. Remember that. He says nothing about me threatening to R-word his girlfriend because I simply never said it. And if I had, then why is he saying in that clip all respect to me? But he did the exact same shit that Lamza did. The exact same shit. He was a fan, he got tight at a gay joke, 
and then said exactly the same shit that Lamza said. But it, it got resolved quicker. So here he is claiming that the why you on my dick comment was a gay joke, insinuating that I'm self-conscious about my sexuality, and that's why I lashed out. Which is completely disingenuous. It didn't cross my mind for a second that he was making a gay joke, because it wasn't a gay joke. In my mind, he was obviously trying to big league and disrespect me. Next, Sneeko recounts what I said to him in the lead up to the why you on my dick comment and misrepresents it once more. It's predictable because let me show you what Brendan Buckingham fucking said to me. So he he kept asking me to get into a fight and I'm like, man, I don't really feel like it. And I, I said like, bro, I don't feel like doing it. And then he says something like, uh, yo, I've been watching the streams. Keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. I love your videos and everything. And I'm like, hey, why you on my dick? And then, you know, I liked his, his message. And I said, why you on my dick? A joke. So here he claims I was fanboying and complimenting his streams, when in reality, I was clarifying that my fight challenge did not offend him out of respect. If his phone is in his hand while he's saying it, the DMs are right there. Why is he intentionally misrepresenting what I said? I believe it's because if he said what I actually said, it makes him look like a bit of a fucking douchebag to give such a bizarre and disrespectful response like, why you on my dick? We've never DM'd before, we're not friends, we don't talk to each other like this. I reached out to him in a serious manner like, hey, I'm, you know, I didn't want to offend you with the fight call out. I'm trying to make sure we're cool. I'm trying to show you respect. And he responds, why you on my dick? How am I supposed to take that? Oh, haha, it's so funny. It's just Sneeko, the big bad alpha male. He gets to talk to me however he wants. It's Sneeko, yeah, the, the, he's so tough and cool, yeah. Yeah, I'm on his dick. He then goes on to claim that the reason he said why you on my dick was to not little bro me, which is completely delusional. He also claims I'm setting him up to little bro me, which makes no sense whatsoever. When you challenge to fight someone, they might get offended by that, and I was just being nice and clarifying he wasn't offended. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, he like, oh, I love your stream, love your video. Hey, why you on my dick? Get off my dick. Because it makes me feel uncomfortable when people give me too many compliments. And the humor diffuses that. The humor brings both of our egos down. I'm not going to little bro him anymore, which is he's setting me up by like saying, I love, love your streams and everything. That could be like, yeah, man, it's a great thing. One day you could get like me. I don't feel like little bro him. I think he's funny. So I'm trying to diffuse the fucking self-esteem he gave me. Why you want my dick? Just trying to see us as equals, bro. Clarifying someone isn't upset that you challenge them to a boxing match is completely reasonable, but he has to make up this whole story about him trying not to big bro me after I fanboyed out so he can come out as this humble, logical good guy when that is a blatant lie. And if he's watching this, then unblock me, screenshot the fucking DMs, and show him yourself. You lied. Why are you always misrepresenting things? He bends the truth to meet his reality, and there's a lot of evidence of this. So why? Two people who respect and like my videos can s fucking flip like that. One gay joke, hey, get off my dick. Hey, why are you wearing gay shorts? Why does that happen, chat? This proclamation that I was overreacting is very ironic coming from Sneeko because if you recall, last year, a YouTuber by the name of D'Angelo Wallace commented on a YouTube video where Sneeko admitted he cheated on his girlfriend and said, and I quote, he's for the streets. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. One small, harmless comment. And how did Sneeko react? It absolutely enraged him. He commented on my last video and got top comment saying he belongs to the streets. I don't know you. You don't know me. And you're judging me, calling me a thought. It, it got me feeling a type of way, I'm not gonna lie. I don't wanna fight him. I don't wanna, I don't wanna hit him. I, I wouldn't wanna punch this guy in the face. Look at his, I love his braces. It pissed him off so much that he made a 22 minute video trying to expose him where he tore apart every aspect of D'Angelo Wallace for the sole reason that he made one small comment. All he said to you, Snakeo, was he's for the streets, which is pretty harmless and funny considering you just admitted in front of your entire audience that you cheated on your girlfriend. And I'm sure she didn't appreciate that. That's really not the nicest thing to do. And technically he's right. You are for the streets in that situation. You bum, you Lil Tekka Ellen looking at, you fucking weirdo. Just another gay nerd with glasses who's probably talks the same way and snitches on people. Angela Wallace, you got me feeling some type of way, but I ain't gonna lie. Those glasses, this one little bit. I challenge you. You want to box me, bro? 
Let's do a 1v1 boxing match. You say I belong to the streets. Yeah, I belong to the streets. We could rock this out on the streets or we could do it in the ring, bro. Let's box. So he insults his braces, the way he dresses, his mannerisms, his content, and everything else about him. He absolutely went the fuck off and ripped him apart. 22 minutes because of four words, Sneeko. That's what you did. Now, can you see the hypocrisy there? Can you see the lack of logic from Sneeko's perspective? Where is that energy with me? It's easy to have that energy with someone like D'Angelo Wallace, go watch the guy talk. But why don't you have that energy with someone like me, a tall, lanky, horse-mouthed goofball? Why can't you have that energy with me, my man? I'd rather just, just I'd rather sit at home and yell at a camera, tell jokes, than you know, risk my manhood falling flat for Brandon Brandon Buckingham. You know, if I lose the fight. So let's get this straight. You aren't allowed to say Sneeko is for the streets when he publicly cheats on his girlfriend and embarrasses her in front of his entire audience. But he's allowed to tell me I'm a dick rider when I try to clarify a relationship and I can have no recourse. I'm not allowed to be pissed off about it because it's just a joke. Well, it wasn't a joke to me, little Nico. We aren't friends, it wasn't funny, and I responded accordingly. Yeah, I probably took it too far, but you definitely took it way, way too far with D'Angelo Wallace. And did you ever consider for a second, what if D'Angelo was joking? Why can't the same nuance that you demand to be applied to your statements be applied to other people's? See, Sneeko expects everyone else to abide by a certain set of rules while he himself does not have to abide by any rules whatsoever. And that's a reoccurring theme you're going to see throughout this video. Little baby boy Nico has no logical consistency with any of his beliefs. He will literally fucking say anything. He's a hypocrite, he's a fraud, and he stands for nothing but grifting and cheap clicks. It's like he's become the opposite of what he used to represent before he started this bullshit schnico alpha male shtick he's doing. But hey, money's everything, I guess. It's working for him. Let me keep reading. He posted all these stories like going at my character, but it, it was deleted in like five minutes. And you know- So he keeps bringing up how I deleted the stories in five minutes, insane. Insinuating, I regretted it instantly when in reality they were up there for over two hours and he's the one that begged me to delete them with tears in his eyes. Why is he acting like I did it on my own accord? This fucking guy begged me to delete them and then right after goes on stream and misrepresents everything like, oh, Brandon regretted it immediately. But this is only the tip of the iceberg that is Snako and his deception. I fear it goes even deeper than I realize. I'm not going to take the time to dig even deeper on Snako. I'm done with it after this video. I'm not watching the guy's content, but I bet you if you took the time to watch, it is probably so fucked up. I mean, just think about it. This rap allegation shit has been on the internet for six weeks and no one has said anything about it. All the evidence that is false has been out there. No one has said anything about it. No one connected the dots. He's just allowed to say this shit and no one cares. And I'm not gonna let him do that. Good YouTuber, Brandon Buckingham. And th this is me, bro, I'm, I'm just, if you can notice, I'm putting my ego aside. He said a lot of like, you know, hurtful stuff. But my feelings don't get hurt anymore, man. I've heard it all. He, he's saying the most stuff that would really try to get under my skin. Bro. He claims he's putting his ego aside and that my words don't hurt him. Meanwhile, he was just crying to me on the phone, begging me to have mercy. Why not just admit you're hurt? Why are you trying to fake it? It's fine to be hurt, Sneeko. But people's ego and respect, like the male ego is so fragile now. It's so fragile where one simple gay joke, <laughs> All I said was, why you on my dick? And he's talking about my girlfriend. Like, he knows I'm not a cuck. He knows I'm not a cuck. Do I know you're not a cuck, Nico? I've, I've seen her fuck other men. Imagine, see, imagine seeing the girl you love, like, get fucked. You love her? Bonner. If it's gonna happen, I might as well see it, supervise it, make sure everything's okay. Wait, what? Seeing her with another person, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. To, I th but I think it's something everybody should do. What's up, uh... You seem like a pretty big cuck to me, little guy. I was literally having PTSD watching that. I was like having war flash. <gasps> Are you okay, man? I'm worried about you, whippersnapper. I'm starting to get real worried about you. And I cleared it up. I just called him. I'm like, bro, relax. I'm joking. He's like, you're joking? Oh my God. He was, he was literally on his way to training. He, had, he was this, he was like, <clears throat> and I'm like, bro, I know what's going through your head. I was, when I first started training, I was feeling <clears throat> the same shit. Relax. I was joking. You didn't see it. It's okay, no beef squash. You said hurtful shit, I'ma let it slide. And he's like, man, I really, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Did I say sorry? Cause from my recollection, I never apologized. And also from your recollection, I never apologized. And also, his he, I don't even, when we did that call, you know, you didn't even say sorry. He's just like, yeah, I see, I see. He didn't even apologize. Internet has fucked people's heads up. 
They don't, they just say shit. It's like he's a pathological liar and does it out of habit. And he's always acting like he knows everything. I know what's going on through your head. What are you a fucking clairvoyant, Snako? You're this all-seeing, omnipotent prophet that understands everyone. Shut the fuck up with that nonsense. It's such crap. Like, chat, you can troll me all you want, man. I'm telling you, it doesn't affect me anymore. Really. <sighs> Mind you, he's not hurt here. Remember that. He really wants you to think that. He's the big guy in charge. Alpha male Snakeo in the house. Big time. How I'm on Snakeo dick while his girl is literally trying to deep throw mine. Ah ha ha ha. S tier irony. His entire brand is built off being an alpha male. What type of alpha male constantly overcompensates? Is it egomaniac, lets his girl get came on by strange men, and refuses to fight someone? Snakeo, you're a lame. I'm a cold ass. Smack the taste out of your mouth in your hometown, Goofy. Right after a message where he's saying, I respect and love your videos. Literally right after that. He's like, I respect, I love your videos. And I'm like, hey, why are you on my dick? Joking. And then in a second, flip. I'm going to fuck your girl. I'm going to beat you up. I'm a fraud. I'm a fake alpha male. Right after saying, I love your videos. There you go, another blatant lie. I never said I respect and love your videos in those DMs. If he would unblock me and show you, you'd see he was lying here. I clarified that he wasn't upset about the call out, but he is painting me as a fanboy that made him uncomfortable with praise. Would it make you uncomfortable if I called you out to fight, you declined it, and then I clarified, hey, I didn't, just want to make sure that didn't upset you. Just want to make sure we're cool and that I do respect you. Would that make you uncomfortable, like I'm fanboying over you and singing praises? In my world, it was a totally regular thing to do and did not warrant the dick rider comment. So why is he lying here? Why can't he bring himself to tell the truth? Why has he blocked me on all social media platforms so I can't show the DMs proving he's lying here? He's just trying to paint me as a fan to make me look bad and to make him look good, and this has no basis in reality. Unless you consider my exact quote, I got you, I hope it didn't rub you the wrong way or anything, I just thought you'd be a legitimate good opponent that I'd respect, much love Sneeko, as a form of dick riding. They know I'm not fake. The reason they got so triggered and offended is, bro, they hear trolls like y'all all the day. These dudes doing troll shit, they're YouTubers. They get this on a regular basis. The reason they're trolling me is because they respect me. Little old Snakeo is so wrapped up in his own bullshit, the way he speaks is textbook gaslighting, and I hate that word, but it really is, so I'm gonna do it to him. Snakeo, you know what you're doing is completely fucking insane. You know I did not threaten to R-word anyone, and you know you're misrepresenting me in all these situations. You are so fake, and I have less than zero respect for you. I think you're like sick in the head or something, like something's off, something's wrong with you. And what I said, a gay joke, like, like really hit them at their character. The male ego is fragile, bro. The male ego is fragile. Here he goes, double downing again that it was a gay joke. Again, ridiculous and projecting that my ego is fragile as he looks to the side and clearly is hurt with his fragile ego. Are you noticing any trends here? He seems to do a lot of projecting. At least that's my opinion. Maybe I could be wrong. The guy seems like he's projecting. Brandon Buckingham's a fucking comedian. He's a fucking comedian YouTuber. I thought he would understand a why you on my dick joke. Again, I was just checking in to make sure I didn't offend you out of respect and in no way, shape, or form did I think for a single second it was a joke, much less a gay joke, and I don't think Sneeko meant it as a joke until I flipped out and he got scared. I think he thought he was going to big bro me because I look up to him so much and he's this great Sneeko, and then when he realized I was serious, he was like, holy shit, what do I do? He starts crying. Uh, it's a joke. Uh, you're going to feel bad for me. And then, okay, at the end, he said, uh, to clarify, Sneeko has not sign a box he has refused to fight because i'm on his dick no i'm not bro i was saying you on my dick for complimenting me too much and making me feel uncomfortable by stroking my ego again god damn man i wasn't stroking your ego how in the hell can what i said be interpreted as me stroking your ego i'm clarifying i thought you'd be a legitimate good opponent that i'd respect 
Is that too far for you? Was that me showing you respect or was that me dick riding you? I was trying to tell you I don't view you as a weak, easy matchup and that I meant no ill will by it. Where the fuck are all the compliments he's talking about? They literally do not exist anywhere. Show the DMs. Why are you saying I was just singing your praises and complimenting you? You're a liar, man. And there's no reason to lie here, but to try to make yourself look good. You're trying to save face and lie. It's sad. It's fucking sad and it's pathetic. I was ready to take the L. You turned it into some bullshit and now look at the situation you're in. What a pitiful excuse. Your main channel is literally dying. Word for word what Lamza said. Both my fans, Hamza, Lamza, and Lorandon Luckingham. Sorry, I'm going to have to do it. They both watch my videos and they're, they're trying to get in my head saying my main channel's dying. Why are YouTubers saying the thing? Why are YouTubers saying my main channel's dying? Why are other YouTubers saying you fell off? The date of this stream is June 5th, 2022. Let's look at Little Snakeo Social Blade. Whoop, there it is. His shit was completely flatlined at this point. He only gained 1,000 subs that following week on his backup channel and literally zero on his main channel. He was well on his way to what I'm sure he viewed as relevancy, which is why he started going so hard on the alpha male act. He saw Andrew Tate blowing up and getting rich and those stupid fresh and fit dorks blowing up and getting rich and he realized he had to start deep throating their cocks and clinging to their nuts or he was never going to get the fame he so fervently desired. He's a total trend hopping fraud and I bet he'd disavow everything he currently stands for if it becomes untrendy like the spineless grifter he is. They feel that that's the something that really eats away. Falling off is the worst thing to a YouTuber. That's the reason two YouTubers who are also my fans said that to try to get under my skin. And that's the reason your entire content changed, to save your failing career. Because as you said, it's the worst thing as a YouTuber to feel. And your channels were going nowhere at this time, so I'm sure you felt the pressure. Sneeko needs this alpha male act so badly. Look how it's working for him. People are believing his lies. They think he's actually an alpha male. They think he's red pill. They think he brings the truth. He's the one that lives in reality. This guy, he's the one that lives in reality. Really, you believe that. That's actually what you believe. It's hilarious to me that people believe his act. It's about as convincing as Casey Anthony claiming that she was a good mother. Yeah, Sneeko, you're really taking the red pill, man. You're just like fucking Morpheus, you and Andrew. You guys are incredible. Wow, please enlighten me. I've been on the blue pill my whole life. You're so informed. So many red pills. So based. So epic. Man, he's so smart. He's so good. Your main channel's dying and you literally are desperately clinging to this alpha male. Hold up. Red pill persona that is completely fabricated. I used to rock with and support this dude, but on God, it's fuck him from now on. I'll be in New York City, July, Sneeko. Come watch me lick shots on your busted ass girl. Whole gang, it, bro, now he's saying the, the whole gang is gonna run a train on my girlfriend. Like, it's not even trolling. He's met her. Yes, I did meet her. And she was actually on my dick. And you know it, right in front of you. Is that the reason you made up the lies about me threatening to rape her? Is it because you were uncomfortable and shook that your girl was flirting with us? Were you having flashbacks of those strange dudes fucking her in front of you in arm's length away? I want to know why you made it up. And pay very close attention to how he doesn't bring it up once this entire stream, which happened only hours after the last interaction he had where I supposedly threatened to rape her. Why? Why isn't he bringing it up now? There's not a single mention of <laughs> this whole stream. Why didn't he bring it up in this stream? This is what social media does and how it fucks up people's heads. He's saying he's met this girl. Like, <laughs> we had dinner together, bro. Instagram, like social media, YouTube, this shit can have you lost in the sauce, bro. You don't see like, bro, what are you doing? Brandon, you've met my girlfriend. <laughs> I'd like to clarify, if it wasn't for all the lies, manipulation, and eventual- Ooh. 
Ooh. accusations he levied against me. I'd feel really bad about making someone sad like this. I don't think it's good to pick on people. I don't think it's good to quest to hurt someone. And if he wasn't such a piece of shit, yeah, I would be in the wrong and I would feel really bad because he's putting on a good poker face. He does seem sad. He does seem pretty shook. But Snake O is an op. He deserves to feel sad. In fact, he deserves much worse so he can wake the fuck up from the narcissistic dream world he lives in. And I think if this video gets to him, it'll probably help him. But I think he might be too far gone. It's going to shake him. It's going to rattle him. And honestly, I'm excited to see how he reacts because everything I'm saying is truth. I'm being honest. He is a fucking liar. Like she asked us to last time I was in town. This is so good. So, okay, I'll admit she didn't ask us to do that. But she was incredibly flirtatious all night right in front of his face. And if I was a betting man, I'd bet it all that she was down for a night on the town with a cold ass rider. Do you like that, Sagan? Do you like that one? At this point, I'm sure she'd never admit it. I'm curious to see if he'll bring her on stream and get her to make up a bunch of bullshit and lies. Time will tell. But like I said, they ended up meeting two people at the restaurant that we witnessed and Sneeko claims they went back to the room and hooked up with them. That seems to be pretty good evidence that they were riled up and in the mood, right? I'm not just making it up. They really were in an open relationship and they really were fucking people and she really was interested in a young man. And I'm gonna call Brandon so he can vouch everything I'm saying. I don't vouch for a single thing he says. Like she asked us to last time I was in town. Do you think he really believes this shit? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie on the stream. I, it, it's, I'm a little hurt now. That, I, bro, he ate dinner with my fucking girl, bro. <clears throat> Finally, he's honest. He admits he's hurt. Finally, a refreshing moment of truth from a man who can't help but lie at every fucking corner. And if hearing me say that about your girl hurt you so bad, why did you willingly watch her get fucked by strange men for your own enjoyment in arm's length away? That seems pretty backwards to me, cucko. Shoo! Get Monica on stream, Monica blocked me. Monica blocked me and also I said in her, con she doesn't want to get on bro. People are afraid of real conversation. People can't talk. We were. I was just talking to him. I was just talking on my Instagram. So I don't have Instagram notifications on, and I didn't see the call. So this isn't evidence of anything. He's stretching the truth here again. He keeps bringing up him getting blocked by this girl as a sign of them being afraid. But the dude literally blocked me. So that's ironic. And I don't really understand why he's shocked I'm not answering. If you were to pick up your phone right now and Instagram FaceTime Sneeko, do you think he's going to answer? Howard Howard said, uh, human nature bro, L Brandon. No, it's an L, but I'm not going to like hold it against him. I'm not going to stir YouTube drama and beef. You know, I'm trying to like break down the barriers of this. Like I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all like I could have turned this into YouTube beef, but I'm not trying to stir up controversy for no reason. I'm just trying to get to the truth and make jokes. Oh, the ever humble and wise Sneeko isn't causing beef. He just wants the truth. Yet somehow he goes on stream one month later and makes this whole situation about rape. He uses rape as a chess piece to try to cancel me. The humble and wise, all-seeing Sneeko. His pineal gland is so swollen. I can only imagine how open his third eye is when he fabricates these claims that I threatened to rape his girlfriend out of fucking thin air. This, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? What the hell is he thinking? I'm really like, I'm, I'm, I'm on my own dick right now because I, I like being right. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. That's where I get a little bit of my fucking ego or whatever. I like making people laugh and I like being right. And especially when it's documented. Well, how do you like this, Nico? How do you like being wrong? Is it fun for you? And yeah, it's documented. And I'm thankful it is documented because otherwise I wouldn't be able to prove this bullshit. That's why I love cameras. The cameras, they tell the truth. So that's where you fucked up. You never should have got on stream and said all this shit about me. Did you forget you did this stream before you did the rape stream one? Is your brain that fried? Or did you just think I'm stupid and wouldn't connect the pieces? I don't exactly take these rape allegations lightly, dude. Like you, you seriously fucked up on this one. I know you got away with it because I haven't said anything and I've let it slide this whole time, but I've just been waiting for the right time and the time is now. You're gonna keep seeing it over and over again. I'm gonna stick to funny. I'm gonna stick to the truth. I'm just gonna be honest, be myself. I'm not gonna sell nothing. I'm not gonna get weird, bro. I'm gonna get weird, but I'm not gonna do weird shit to other people, bro. So what exactly happened here? What made you make up the rape lies? Is that sticking to funny in your eyes? Is that sticking to truth? This fucking guy's always talking about truth, 
always talking about sticking to reality, sticking to the truth. Don't be a bot. Be free thinking. I mean, it's so weird to make up a rape accusation on another man. That's like the weirdest, most beta male thing you can do. And like I said, if he had his way and people believed what he said, think about it. If those accusations were taken as fact and I really threatened to rape a woman, people would say, oh, don't hang out with Brandon Buckingham. He threatened to rape a woman. Do you think people would like me? Do you think I would be able to be on this platform? Do you think I'd have a job? Do you think I'd be able to continue doing what I'm doing if Sneeko had his way? Sneeko tried to cancel me. Well, yeah, good shit. Red Pill Sneeko tried to deplatform me. He's so honest and he's so funny. You greasy little fucking rat. Legitimately, I thought Brandon was my friend before that happened. Hopefully, I can move past this and we can still be friends. But imagine if like someone you considered a friend said he's going to run a train on your girlfriend. Oh, wow. What a brave man trying to move past it. He's so adamant here that we were friends, but that's not true. He's just manipulating you. Sneeko, again, was never my friend. He's a guy I happened to be around two times by coincidence. He felt like he was in a corner and couldn't meet me head on with the I'm going to beat your ass shit. So he took the only route he could and played the victim. He painted us as friends and me as someone who backstabbed him over an obvious joke when it wasn't a joke. And if we were such good friends, why is he the only one that feels that way? And he only ended up following me on Instagram three weeks before our blow up for one reason and one reason alone. Can you guess what it is? Was it because we hit it off in New York or in Vegas? Was that why he followed me? No, because he didn't follow me then. He only followed me when I collabed with Gideon on the Most Racist Town in America video. That's when he finally followed me. He saw me with a big name YouTuber. He thought I was going to have success. So he jumped on the cold ass riding bandwagon. It's funny. It took him that long to think, oh, well, I better go follow my good friend, Brandon. We're so close. I like him so much. What a fucking joke. I'm going to try to take the high road in this situation. I understand why he got there, and Lamza showed me why. I saw right through it immediately. Those Instagram stories that we read were only up for like five minutes, and I'm like, Brandon, bro, come on, man. And he was like, huh, huh? He, like, he was so confused. <laughs> I wish I streamed that phone call. He was so confused, bro. But like, it's conf like when you're real and when you're honest, like people don't even, that's what social media is doing to people, bro. I mean, this is just getting old. So many lies are repeated that I've already addressed in this clip, and he's such a natural manipulator. But I do think it's important for Nico to ask himself, what is social media doing to me? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about what doing this this whole time has done to your brain? You seem pretty fucked up and deluded, man. You seem like you have an issue. You don't seem grounded in reality, and you're constantly asserting that you live in reality, everyone's a bot, they don't get it, you get it, you're red-pilled. But you seem to be pretty fucked in the head here, man. Making up lies, bending the truth, not able to confront reality. I think you should seek help. I think the beef is squashed. I'm not gonna keep, like... Bro, I'm gonna keep smoking on it a little bit, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm smoking on it. I, I have a lot of fucking YouTubers in this pack, son. If you've been in the stream, yo, chat, we got a lot of YouTubers in this pack, so I'm gonna smoke up today. Out for smoking weed, bro. I know I said I'm not gonna smoke weed on the stream, but we got a lot of YouTubers in this pack. It's nice being right. <laughs> oh, come on now, little boy. Goddamn, boy. Come on now. The beef is far from squash, little man. And on a day like today, the cold ass riders are smoking on big Sneeko pack today. Bumba clot! Everybody smoking on fucking Sneeko pack today. Roll them up. I'm fucking enjoying that sticky green, that sticky icky. I'm enjoying smoking on this arrogant fucking prick and watching him eat his words. Sneeko pack. Roll it up. Smoke it up. Fuck this guy. And then I'm a fraud. I'm a fake alpha male. I respect you. I respect you. Next day, fuck you! Why? Why does that happen? Because of your actions, Sneeko, and how you carry yourself, how you treat people. You could have just said, it's all good, or even ignored me instead of treating me like a fanboy dick rider. You could have just not gone on stream and tried to cancel me in front of one of my close friends by saying I threatened to rape your girlfriend. You could have just not done that. It would have been so easy, and this would not have happened. 
Your conceited narcissism has clouded your judgment like King Theoden was corrupted by Wormtongue. And that's a really fun reference I enjoy. I love Lord of the Rings. I'm so passionate about it. It's so good. And it would have been so easy to avoid this whole situation, my guy. Just a little humility goes a long way. I don't understand how you didn't learn that lesson when you attempted to cancel Mr. Beast for your own personal game and it blew up in your face. How is that not a wake-up call? What the fuck is wrong with you? That's what I keep asking myself. The more I look into the Sneeko, it's like, what is wrong? with this guy. I think he has like a personality disorder and I'm not trying to be hyperbolic and just make him out to be something he isn't. Like I really think something's fucked up with him. And the reason I'm going to take the high road on this is because I did the same thing. I didn't say this disrespectful shit, but I did make an expose video on Mr. Beast. It was up for five minutes and then he gave me the, the gracious attitude to look past it and no, our friendship was ruined after that. It ruined it. But how I want to differ from Mr. Beast so, so what happened, context, Mr. Beast fired me and I made an exposed video and I said that he, um, he's not real in his videos and that, you know, he doesn't swear and he doesn't curse and that he peels. I, you know, I made like an exposed video on Mr. Beast trying to talk about the, the fraud that goes on behind the scenes. I deleted it right away. Almost nobody saw it, but he saw it. And we were like in a situation where we could have been friends and that completely ruined it because now he lost respect for me. You, you have to respect your friends. And I, he, and rightfully so, he lost respect for me. That was a bitch move. I admit it. I took an L there. Like, it, I should not have done that. That was stupid. It was jealous. I wasn't successful. He had more subs. I did what I thought I could do to get something out of the situation. He fired me. So here's an exposed video. I, immediately when he saw it, I regretted it. But I fucked up that relationship for life. What Lamza and Brandon Buckingham just did is exactly the same thing. The difference is they're talking about like fucking my girl and how I'm faking everything. Like, all right, bro, you don't really believe that. You don't really believe that you're trying to get under my skin. The difference is I do believe what I'm saying. There is substance behind my words and why I'm saying them. I'm not doing it just for clout. Right now on YouTube, I'm doing better than I've ever done on all platforms. I don't need to do this. I don't need to make this video. If you never would have said the rape thing, I wouldn't have made it. I didn't jump at the opportunity to make a YouTube video about you. This shit first started three months ago and there's been no YouTube video. I don't need to do this for attention. You forced my hand by being a fucking liar. I want to still try to be friends with Hamza and Brandon Buckingham and not let their mistakes determine the relationship we can have. Ah, uh, yeah. Some high road using rape as a pawn for your personal gain to try to ruin my reputation. You are so wise, Nico. So wise and intelligent. I know that they still would want to be friends with me. I know that because they like my videos and they've been watching it for years and I know that they regret what they said. Dumbass, I don't want to be your friend. I want you to stop shaving your eyebrow like a douchebag. I mean, look at that fucking thing. Is he shaving that in his eyebrow to make it seem like he's been in a fight and has a scar? Is that what that is? Is it to look tough? It is, right? I mean, he's trying to look tough with the little uh, eyebrow slit. Hey, yo, even this fucking guy's eyebrows are fake. Holy shit. Everything about him is fabricated. That's like the classic frat boy douchebag fuckwad look. Man, be careful of people that have the eyebrow slit. I think that's indicative of some like mental fucked up trauma. It's not a good thing to do. Don't, don't do that to your eyebrow. It's the mark of a douchebag. Brandon. Brandon, I'll, 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 let, I'll let it go. I'm gonna let it go. You should have, and you didn't, and you fucked up. Instead, you put two guns to both your feet and you pulled the triggers. But I'm tired of like, I'm tired of the bullshit communication in social media. I'm tired of like the beef of like people not being able to talk to each other eye to eye, like expose videos, tweets, cancel culture. Cancel culture has like, this, this is kind of the result of cancel culture. Fuck you, you suck. Ah, you're the roar, you're a fraud. Dog, you made a rape accusation video about me in front of your whole audience trying to ruin my life and you say you're against cancel culture. How can you justify what you did? You tried to cancel me. You tried to say I threatened to rape someone. You tried to cancel me. Stop acting like you're a crusader against cancel culture. These alpha male guys are more mixed up than a fucking milkshake, man. At the end of the day, we're just people talking to cameras. 
<laughs> I'm just a guy talking to cameras, chat. We're the same. We're the same. Oh, God. Here's a pitiful attempt from him to try and convince you his ego isn't out of control and that he's humble. Like, I've been able to get into the heads of both. And I, I think I'm really starting to understand human nature. And the fact that I predicted this video, I think kind of shows that, chat. <sighs> chat, he met my fucking girl, bro. Can you believe that? Like, we sat down, broke bread, and ate a meal. So here, I <laughs> hear clairvoyant Nico can't decide if he can tell the future or not. Why are you so surprised if you're all-knowing? This dude's logic is pure comedy. Watching him try to make sense of things and maintain that he's the man is just good. It's like really, really good. Like you see, you see how I'm getting emotional right now? Like how like I'm blinking, like low-key blinking tears away. When I get emotional, it's either like it comes out. I could let it out by yelling. Then I wouldn't get like watery eye, but I'm being great. I'm trying to be like empath. And it's like, whew. Cause these dudes have been watching my videos for years, bro. They definitely show, they show my videos to other people. They respect me and they still said that shit. Fuck, bro. Fuck. Oh, the little crab baby. No, no, no. Oh, 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 no, Look, guys, for those of you who are feeling empathy for Sneeko right now, stop it. He would not give you the same decency, I promise you. How do I know? Here's a quote from Sneeko about crying on stream and mental health. So D'Angelo talked about the fact that uh, after taking a hiatus from YouTube, he was pretty sad. He was depressed. Uh, he was dealing with a lot of mental health issues. Yeah. And you, in watching him, uh, you know, talk about this stuff, cry about it, you felt a lot of different ways. One of the things that you kind of start off with is we should encourage people uh, crying or saying this kind of stuff online. If you're sad, get over it. Uh, These are just some quotes I took together. Um, do you still feel that way? And if you do, why? I think you get too much validation for talking about your your mental health and crying and getting depressed. I think you could say, you could cry on a video and say I have mental health problems. Twitter made me sad. I needed to take a mental health break because I was on Twitter too much. And they do that because liberals will all go in the comments and be like, oh my God, feel better. Oh, it's, I'm so glad you're opening up. I'm also sad. I'm also sad. My therapist told me this and it, all it does, you think that it's getting over your mental health, but all it does is encourage it more and more. It gives you a sense, it gives you dopamine that other people are like validating your mental health problems. But reality is your life hard. You're a successful YouTuber. You stream all day. Your life is fucking easy. You have the easiest job ever. You have the best job ever. And Twitter made you sad. Get over it, pussy. Do you think this guy has any mental record of what he said online? Why can't he take his own advice? It's pure hypocrisy, time in and time out. Don't pity him in any fucking way. Look how this fucker would talk about you if you cried on stream. Also, I just want to say, these alpha male pieces of shit that are taking over the internet are terrible people. Cosplaying as the toughest guys in the room, posturing, peacocking, and then they want to get men to ignore mental health problems. They want you to swallow your depression and anxiety and not talk about it. They want you to shut up and be a man. I mean, what type of shit is that? That's a massive step in the wrong direction. I get that it's bad to have a victim mentality and try to make up things to look cool because you're mentally ill, but there are so many men out there that struggle with mental health problems and are too afraid to speak out about it because of pompous dumbasses like Snakeo that say things like, oh, be a man, don't talk about your feelings. Stop listening to what this guy has to say. He's lived his entire life behind a computer desperately trying to get famous. I need people to admire me. <laughs> it's fucking corny. <laughs> I desired fame for so long. That was, uh, I thought my life would be set if I'm famous. Fame brings a lot, but it, it, it turns you into kind of an egomaniac. He's been desperately trying to be famous for years. Stop fucking listening to him. He's fake. They're not trying to run a train on my girl. They're saying that because they felt disrespected and they tried to say the most disrespectful thing to me. They couldn't fuck my girl. My girlfriend would look at them and laugh. She doesn't respect them. They would... They would look at my girlfriend and fold, real talk. Like, if I'm being real... <laughs> hey, bro, I was looking at your girl, and she was looking at me, and we did have a laugh together, and I did think about folding her over something, consensually, of course, but I didn't. 
You know who did, though? A bunch of weird dudes right in front of you in a fucking sex house. Isn't that funny? And yeah, here he acknowledges that he knows the train comment wasn't even serious, which it wasn't, and he knows I was just saying it to piss him off, and there was nothing to it but that. He admits it right here. This looks so fucking bad for him. Just wait till we get to the rape part. It makes him look so stupid given the context. And for those still watching, I get that it's long-winded, but man, this is this is what you have to deal with when you deal with a Sneeko stream. He talks in fucking circles. He repeats himself. It sucks. This shit fucking sucks. I'm ready for it to be over. I'm fucking tired of talking about this guy. They couldn't. I'm try I would still be friends with them because I see their mistake and I remember feeling the same way. I remember making the same mistake. And I and I don't want them to like I don't want that to ruin their reputation. Ooh, humble, forgiving, all knowing Nico. You are a god among men. What a gracious and noble king. But wait. What happened to you not wanting to ruin my reputation, bro? What happened to that, huh? I want them to grow too. I don't want them to have to like live in their mistakes. They both apologized. We went from this to making up rape accusations. What happened in the meantime? I want to know. It's a pretty bad look, little bitty Nico. But don't worry, you're so small and silly, incapable of making good decisions. It's not your fault. You're just a little baby. Just a little baby, Nico. Oh, fuck. And then boom, the guy that has no empathy for mental health and thinks you're a pussy for being depressed is taking a little mindful moment. How cute is that? He said himself in his own words, people do what he's doing to seek validation. Snicko! 5-2 balding and Ian Jenner. I've seen you in the streams all the time. No D-riding, but you're honest to sell respect, man. Everything else is dishonest now, so I'm just trying to be overly honest, man. Then he gets what he wants. He gets what he was begging for. He gets validation from his chat, and it makes him feel good. It fuels his little bitty baby ball sack, and he uses it, again, as an opportunity to reinforce what, of all things, his honesty within his audience. He really has his audience brainwashed that he tells the truth, and he's honest. I mean, this shit goes so deep, dude. I mean, imagine all the shit you could find if you really analyze this little fucker. <sighs> Here we go, another mindful moment from our cute little bitty Nico. He wants your pity, and he wants it bad, but he would mock you if the roles were reversed. He'd literally make fun of you. He wouldn't feel bad. He'd have no sympathy, but here he is playing the pity card. Personally, I, I, I don't care at all. I say fuck him and his crocodile tears. I'm happy to see him crying, and I would not say something so callous usually. It's not good to want to see someone cry, but in this situation, it brings me real joy to see him cry, the alpha male crying like a big baby. He leaves the screen for almost three entire minutes mid-stream. He's off screen for three minutes crying because I said I would knock him out and I would consensually sleep with his girlfriend and that he's fake and he's a fraud. And it got to him so bad he had to go cry off stream. Some alpha male, some tough guy. Really cool. And after saying all that fucked up shit about D'Angelo Wallace crying on stream and complaining about his mental health, here he's doing the exact same thing. How does he not realize it? I don't think there's anything wrong with crying and talking about mental health. I think it's good. I'm very open. I have problems with depression and anxiety. I cry. I was crying yesterday about my brother, literally. But this asshole has laid his bed of nails, and I think it's only fair he has to lay in it. Fuck. 
I'm gonna let it slide, man. Fuck. Jesus Christ, man. Imagine, imagine if you heard that. Imagine if that happened to you. Just think about it. Think if that happened to you. What would I do? I would defend my honor. If you said to me what I said about you, Sneeko, I'd have the gall to step in the boxing ring and defend my name, win, lose, or draw. And I'm not an alpha male at all. But how can you really sit there and LARP as this tough, stoic, all-knowing alpha male while you're fucking crying on stream like a pussy, putting up this fucking circus act and uploading it to the internet? You should be embarrassed by this. Anyone else doing this, I would feel bad for, but for you, it's embarrassing because of the bullshit you promote. And listen, I'm not an alpha male. Don't get this twisted like I'm saying, they're not alpha males, I'm an alpha male. I'm not an alpha male. I don't act like an alpha male. I don't go around being the toughest guy in the room. I know I'm not the toughest guy in the room. I've been humbled so many times in the wrestling room, in the jiu-jitsu room. I know who I am. I'm comfortable with myself. I'm not an alpha male. But this fucking guy, Nico, he is not an alpha male. He's the farthest thing from an alpha male. If he's an alpha male then I don't even want to say what I am because this guy is literally like less than a worm. He's less than dirt. He's like the ultimate fucking beta male. Sneeko, you're a little schoolgirl. You're pathetic. You're a spineless little worm that wriggles around and hides behind a screen and you'd never risk stepping in that ring because you'd never risk facing that fear and facing truth. It's genuinely scary. I know I'm scared to make that walk. I have no problem saying I'm scared to make that walk. I could lose my fight. I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to be brave, go in there and face my fears. That's why I'm doing it because it's a challenge. It's something to be proud of. Sneeko will never go into that ring against an actual opponent because he's scared of the truth. He's hiding from himself. He's a fucking beta male. The same people, it's like, the most hate comes from like, this shit is embarrassing. I don't know. I don't know what the public's going to think. I'm pretty sure it's going to be well received. But in my mind and in, in, in my friend's eyes that are witnessing this, how you've acted is so embarrassing. And we have such little respect for you. Like literally none. <laughs> <laughs> like literally dude <laughs> alpha male <laughs> isn't that good snickle oh my god man yeah go open a window buddy that'll make things better maybe scream out the window andrew help me Fresh and fit, it's time to be alpha! Assemble! We gotta be alphas, help me! We're alphas, where are you? Please, we're alphas, please! Andrew's not coming to save you, Buster. You're fresh and fit buddies. They're not coming to save you, and if they are, bring it the fuck on. Those guys are cowards. I'll fuck both those guys up. Those fresh and fit guys, have you seen them? No. Those fresh and fit guys, they're like fucking uh. dorks. They're like failed pickup artists that somehow has tricked the world into thinking they're alpha males because they like shit on women live on their podcast. It's ridiculous. They literally used to be wannabe pickup artists and they failed. So now they're like, you know what? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute here. Oh, I'm an alpha male. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up here a second. Give me a second. I'm, a I'm thinking I'm fucking, I'm starting to fucking think I'm an alpha male here. Could I be? Wait, I, wait, I am. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm an alpha male here. Yeah, that's me. Alpha Brandon. Here we go. Here we go. Where are my peacock feathers? I'm big time. I'm tough. And I'll tell you. And I'll show you. Dead ass, bro. What would you think if that happened to you, chat? What would you think if that happened to you? Stop asking. I'd beat your fucking ass, man. I'd put you in a splatle and I'd make you say sorry to me. I'd make you admit you're not an alpha male. That's what I'd do. Some guy meets your girlfriend. You, you think your friend, I, I thought he was a friend. <sighs> Met my girlfriend, we hung out, made a video together, chopped it up. You know, he's in the streams, he's DMing me, saying you respect me, you love the videos. And then one thing, why you want my dick? 
We didn't have a friendship. It's as simple as that. And you don't get to disrespect me. You don't get to call me a dick rider. And if you do, I am at liberty to behave and treat you how I want. Don't disrespect me and then try to put bounds on how far I can disrespect you. In other words, don't push me and then be upset that I beat the fuck out of you, okay? Keep your hands to yourself, little man. And the, the normal YouTuber reaction right now, if I'm thinking like a YouTuber, is like start beef. Make drama, call him out, fight him. Blackmail, like tell the other YouTubers that I know, like not don't fuck with him anymore. So bang, there it is. The first time he has the thought of trying to blacklist me and he has it live right here on stream. It comes into his amazing clairvoyant omnipotent brain. It crosses through his third eye. You can see him thinking about it. It's the truth. I love it. An actual look into the mind of Snakeo. He could have started beef like he said. He could have tried to fight me like he said, but that would have taken actual balls. He would have actually had to confront me and face me man to man. But oh, poor inchi winchi little Snakeo doesn't have any balls. He's not an alpha male, so he did what's in his nature. He made up a rape lie about me. He misrepresented everything I said and then went on stream six weeks later and made up a unprovoked rape lie about me. Me saying I'm gonna run a train on his girlfriend like she asked has explicit consent within the sentence. That is not me provoking him to make up a rape lie. There is no fucking excuse to make up that rape lie, Sneeko. And if there is, what is it? Why did you make it up? Tell your fans. Tell the internet. This is why it's not easy keeping a real, chat. This is why it's not easy keeping a real. No. No, man. No, you're right. It's not easy keeping it real because you're not real and it doesn't come natural to you. Look, my thought is people like Snakeo shouldn't be in positions of power. He's meant to be an underling. He's meant to be a peasant taking orders. The balance of life is completely fucked up when guys like him start to win and you see how they act. It's sacrilegious. It's against the natural order of things. He's supposed to be on bottom taking orders. This guy should be fucking scrubbing my shoes. Next, Sneeko moves on to his beef regarding Hamza, a beef that was started because Sneeko voluntarily watched a video on stream of Hamza stretching as a part of his exercise routine, and Sneeko, being the brave alpha male that he is, took it upon himself to insult and demean Hamza live on air, completely unprovoked. Here are some highlights of that. I don't, I don't care about your sleeping routine, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't give a fuck about what time you wake up. I don't watch those videos. If you're obsessed with this guy, I think you should find. I think you should. Help, I think you should grow past this shit. Eh, bro, get the fuck. Out. Maria, you want to see Hamza? This is what Hamza is. Why do you? Why do you want to watch him stretch? Do you not have friends? You don't have friends, do you? Bro, get the go, bro, bro, bro. That's crazy. Imagine if I made these videos. Would you still respect me? Hey, wait, hold on. Is that my girl back here? What's she doing? Yeah, the brave, omnipotent Snakeo started yet another beef with unwarranted disrespect, and that's how this whole back and forth between him and Hamza erupted. So the rest of this stream is about Hamza, but there are a few gold nuggets left I'd like to show you. Don't share your woman. It's obviously a source of pain for you. That's not what it is, bro. My, I don't share my woman. Y'all heard one thing on a podcast and assume you know. Bro, you know how normy it was for you guys to think I'm a cuck? Real talk, like, if you know me in real life, bro, come on. That shit is retarded. I don't share my woman. I've met you in real life, and you seem like a massive cuck. So let's get this guy straight. Let's get the red pill Sneeko straight. I don't say anything about raping your girlfriend, and you present that as truth. You literally say you watch your girlfriend get her back blown out right in front of you, and then you present that as false. I'm not a cuck. Sneeko, grab a dictionary. Look up the definition of a cuck. That's what you are. You got cucked, my man. You watched your girl get fucked. You got cucked. Your name's Cucko now, and I gotta ask, Mr. Alpha Male, why the fuck are you at a swinger party with your girl? My run a train comment really unlocked some deep-seated trauma. 
about that dude blowing her back out. And it's sick, honestly. Saying this, it's funny, but it's like it's also sick. Like when I really think about it, it's fucked up. It's really fucked up and gross from my perspective. Like I said, live your life how you want, be in an open relationship. But to do this whole alpha male thing, to do this whole I'm not a cuck thing, and then literally admit you watched her get fucked at an arm's length away. And that's just what he admitted, man. Who fucking knows what this guy's done? I will say this. I wonder if when he hears this, if he hasn't turned it off by now, if he's actually listening to this, if when he closes his eyes right now, he can see the image of her getting her back blown out. I wonder how that feels. That's super red pill, brother. Super alpha male. Man, your people would be proud. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's, uh, let's just for me, let's play that clip again. Let's roll the cuck clip again. What position? No. It was missionary. <laughs> missionary no. legs up. It like was missionary legs, legs up. up. Legs up. Yeah. Oh no! That's such a whole no. So was he staring at her like in her eyes? Yeah, like deep eye contact. Oh no! Deep eye contact. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. Side and blue. And she deep? grabbed it. She's like, "I want you to fuck me." I was like, "Whoa!" What? Whoa! Whoa! whoa. With a toes like this? Yeah. That. That is good. That is really good to hear. I don't share my woman. The reason it hurts and the source of pain. Is that it can't it comes from is that he's trying to say something. He's trying to is that is the effort, is the attempt to try to say the most hurtful thing possible. Why do you think he said that shit? Why do you think because he thought that that was like the biggest source of pain? He was trying to hurt me by saying that. You're trying to get under my skin at the most personal thing. What what hurts me is that he attempted to to make me feel as bad as he possibly could. Bro, stop thinking that anything on the internet, you don't know anything about my fucking love life or my relationship, bro. You don't know. Stop applying your ideas onto it. You don't know. Yeah, dog, we only know what you tell us. And you told us you cuck yourself, alpha boy. What do you want us to think? You want to go on a podcast and say you watch her get fucked. And then you want to call us bots for saying you're a cuck. Okay, Sneeko, go ahead. Just say anything all the time, and that's fine. How about that? No logic, no consistency. Just say anything all the time. Man up, pussy. Does that feel good to hear me say that? Man up, pussy. Does that feel good? Alpha, alpha boy? You fucking reject. And the more you speculate, the more you show your bot mind, bro. I love hearing a crying, dishonest, alpha larping cuck talk about bots like he has somehow freed his mind from the shackles of society just because he has some internet clout. Sneeko, what the fuck have you ever done to make you so special besides cosplay on the internet as an intellectual and then eventually as a tough guy? You're a fucking joke, dude. You've lived your whole life on the internet. You're fake. You're not special. Stop buying the hype. We're just YouTubers that make videos. We're not some fucking big time celebrities. Stop viewing yourself as so fucking special. Humble yourself. Have some decency. Be a human. Anyways, I'm done with this particular stream. We're beating a dead horse and going over the same shit at this point. But that's what a Sneeko stream is. It's regurgitated talking points. It's nothing new. Talking in circles. Pseudo-intellectual bullshit. Completely undeserved alpha male posturing from a LARPer who desperately wanted fame so he could get chicks. And I don't know how you fucking people watch it. You're wasting your time. Listen, I might not be equipped to give alpha advice because I think that whole movement is complete hogwash. But if you want to be tough, if you want to get better if you want to have some pride do martial arts join a wrestling team train muay thai brazilian jiu-jitsu kickboxing fucking judo go out there and compete learn lose grow don't be afraid of taking losses take it on the fucking chin learn from it and keep going face defeat and you'll find out a lot more about yourself through that than trying to fucking act like you're some big bad alpha male and putting on this peacock show that isn't real it's not real you're not growing you're faking it okay and really, I don't think it's that good to be an alpha male. Do you want to hang out with someone that's always trying to be the coolest in the room, always trying to be the most badass in the room? It's fucking annoying. This alpha shit, not only are they fake and they're actually pussies, but even even some 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 actual alpha males or, or people that are really concerned with being an alpha male and they're tough and they're always trying to prove themselves, it's annoying. That shit is fucking annoying. That shit will get you nowhere. Stop looking up to these alpha males. It's not fucking real. It's bullshit. God damn, man. I am fucking just really tired of this, honestly. This is like, uh, it's getting old. So without further ado, let's get to the infamous rape stream, the best part of the video. 
to provide context to the stream, because Lord knows you all aren't tired of hearing me add context for the past seven fucking hours, Sneeko has brought on a very close friend of mine, Steezy Kane. We've been friends for over two years. Steezy and I have a great relationship. I'm sure he'll say exactly that. And Sneeko has him on for one reason, to get him to disavow me live on stream. It's the exact same bullshit that Danny Mullen pulled in the middle of our beef when he had Reckless Ben on his podcast to disavow me, and then had Hooligan Christian on his podcast to disavow me. They're trying to alienate me and turn people against me, but wow, it's not working. Why isn't it working? Because they know me. They've looked me in the eyes. They know who I am, and they're not believing your bullshit. They're not convinced by your fucking lies. In fact, if you aren't familiar with the Danny Mullen beef, go inform yourself, because there's so many parallels between these two guys. Fake alpha males who have gigantic egos that thought they were untouchable, thought they were uncancelable. They fucked with me. They did really fucked up shit to me. I responded, and they got backlash. I don't go out searching to cancel people. I think cancel culture sucks too. It's not what I'm into, but if you're going to say all this fucked up shit about me on the internet for your monetary gain and to fuck what I have going up, then yeah, I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to keep it real and I'm going to break it down for you just like this, like a fucking lawyer. You call me lawyer Buckingham, right? Because I break it down. I get the facts. I cross-reference things and I give you the truth. If you don't think it's true, cross-reference what I'm saying and break down what I'm saying and make a valid retort and see if people believe it. They won't because it's bullshit because you're fucking lying. All right. Let's go. Bots, 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 bot. Yo, you know who's an L man's? Who? Brandon Buckingham. Oh, yeah. That guy that. sucks. Bro, I'm both of y'all's friends, so it's like I'm. You're like, still friends with him after that I'm, shit? I'm in the middle here, you know. All right, bro. In the middle of what? Like I didn't do anything. I said, "Why are you on my dick?" I mean, in the middle, you're yeah. acting like I did something wrong. Yeah. Uh. No, I'm not saying yeah to answer that question or like whatever. Yeah. Um. I don't know, bro. Um, yeah, my, my statement, my official statement, like a company putting it out is... Pussy. It's unfortunate. All right. Yeah. You hear that chat? I just don't know what... I don't, you I hear don't, that chat? I, I just... I'm a plant. Bro, he threatened to R-word my girlfriend. He said me to pull up to New yeah, York yeah, and I mean, run a train on my girl. Yeah. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? Because I said, why you on my dick? A joke? He No, he literally threatened to R-word my girlfriend. Seriously, and I, I thought he was, I still gave him the benefit of the doubt, and then I called him like, yo, can you take that down? You put like my government name up, like a, this is like, you know, and he's like, oh, I thought you were, so he legitimately was threatening to do that. And I'm just saying like, that shows your character. You do that to someone, you're gonna do it again. I'm gonna, ra bro, literally said, I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. Yeah. Literally said that. I mean, he definitely that's like, how do, if you, if you don't like cut someone off after that, I don't know what else. No, I'm, I'm just saying, in my opinion, I would not be friends with somebody like that anymore. What did I do? I said, why are you on my dick? That's it. And he said, I'm going to R word your girlfriend, bro. Bro, like man to man, because you're his friend, he will do that shit again. I don't know how you justify that. I really don't know how you justify that. Seems like a dude who is um like really fiending for attention. Really fiending for attention. And he'll do anything for it. And that's what, like when people desire attention to that level, they lose their character. Social media has fucked up a lot of people where they, they don't see reality and people have lost basic respect. You don't do that. You don't do that. Imagine saying that in real life. I'm gonna run a train on your girlfriend. So he's met her. And so like, that's an example of somebody who will do anything for clout, do anything for attention, and is not based on reality because they desire attention so much. No, because you, I, I do this internet shit, but I'm also based in reality too. Uh -huh. You don't fucking do that. I, I, I know basic respect. You mm -hmm. don't do that. And also, here's a he, I don't even, when we did that call, you know, you didn't even say sorry. He's just like, yeah, I see. I see. He didn't even apologize. Internet has fucked people's heads up. They don't, they just say shit. The most fucked up shit possibly that you can say. Are you kidding me? I've met you in real life, man. You've met my girl in real life. I'm just saying, CZ, be careful. You're saying that's your friend? He did that shit to me, and I thought he was cool. Be careful. All I'm saying. Chat, what do you think? WL. Yeah. 
but it wasn't beef. Like I have before that, I don't give a fuck. I didn't even watch his videos. He was in my stream, stuff like that. Sure, cool. He liked my videos, he's DMing me, yo, I love your videos, I love it so much. And then there's like, why you want my dick? Cause like compliments make me weird. You know that's a joke, right? If I texted you, why you want my dick? Would you yeah, take I mean, that? When people give me compliments, it's like, it's uncomfortable, you know? It's just an example of how fragile the male ego is now, especially for guys like him. When I pull up to New York, I'm gonna, yeah, me and the guys are gonna, fuck out of here. CZ just sitting there like, yep. That's what a lot of guys do now, bro. Is that bad? Um, it's just, I mean, if you're okay with that, fine. If you're okay, like not doing any, like, okay, sure. That's fine with you. Personally, that I, I'm not a man of inaction. Yeah. So when would you cut somebody off? You're saying like, not even on no YouTube shit. You're his friend personally. What would make you cut somebody off as a friend? This dude said he is going to R word my girlfriend. And that doesn't set alarms off like, oh, okay, this guy will probably do it again and might do it to me and my girl. Um, this dude said he is going to R word my girlfriend. No, but <laughs> on his no, Instagram I, I, story I no, and I'm put saying. my government name, said I'm going to fight you and I'm going to take your girlfriend forcefully. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Yeah. What is your opinion about that? I mean, I'm saying it was over the time. It's too far. Like that's. You know, you shouldn't. Bro, I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying that's too far. And that doesn't set alarms off like, oh, okay, this guy will probably do it again and might do it to me and my girl. What's the difference between the way he look, views me and the way he views you? He looked up to me. He was watching my streams. He watched my videos. Right before he went on on the story saying, Man, I'm gonna, uh, he was complimenting my channel. Doesn't he say the same shit about your videos? What is the difference between me and you in his eyes? If he did that shit to me, why wouldn't he do that shit to you? Bro, uh, does it, bro doesn't stand on any principles or standards, sad to see. All right, say the answer from my perspective. There's no reason, my, if I was you, my answer is, if he did that shit to me, there's no reason he wouldn't do that shit again because he looks up to us, he's an attention seeker and clearly has a fragile male ego. And you should be careful who you call your friends because if that guy could switch like that on somebody he looks up to, somebody I thought was a friend, he will do it again. If one of my friends personally ever did some shit like that, it's clipped, it's done. I see your character, I cannot keep you in my circle. I need to be around people who are forward thinking, who I can share my energy with. I need to be around people who I feel comfortable with and who I trust. If they show an example that they can break your trust, I can't fuck with you no more. WL chat. Cause there's no difference and me and you, the way he views it. Clearly, I've seen the way he's around you. He looks up to you. He admires you. He wants your clout. And also, here's a pot. I don't even, when we did that call, you don't even say sorry. He's just like, yeah, I see. I see. He didn't even apologize. Internet has fucked people's heads up. They don't, they just say shit. In my opinion, you should only surround yourself with people who have their, your best interests in mind. Anybody who has negative energy, cut them off. I cannot fuck with you. Anybody who's not helping me, can't fuck with you. Bye. Why would I be around you if you're not going to help me? Why would I be around that? Because there's no difference in me and you the way he views it. Clearly, I've seen the way he's around you. He looks up to you. He admires you. He wants your clout. A lot of people that, that are around you want what you have. And they like you because, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're cool. You have subscribers and stuff like that. So... I think a lot of people prioritize that over the friendship. And maybe it's not a real friend. Maybe they, they fuck with you because you got subscribers. And let me ask, I don't really know your relationship. I'm guessing that guy praises you a lot. Yes or no? Does, yeah. that, guy, does that guy give you a lot of compliments? Yeah. Yep, okay. Think about that. Thank you for the five. Lefty, invite him on the stream and talk us out. No balls. Um, I blo I'm done never giving that guy another fucking second of my attention again in my life. Fuck that. 
This is why I try to take the Frank Ocean approach, bro. And just in, in action, in action. But yeah, we should bro. we should be men of action. That's what we're supposed to do as men: is take action. We're the leaders. Who's gonna lead if not us? You bitch. You no. bitch gonna lead? Just what happened? Okay, think lead. about if the same shit. Like, look. Uh, do you remember the Brandon Buckingham shit? I don't even know who that is. Okay, whatever. Sounds like a basketball player. Um, <laughs> let me click, quickly run it down. So there's this YouTuber that we both know, and um, he was in live streams in season one a lot, like big fan shit like that. I met him a couple times. He went out to dinner um, with me, Maria, a couple YouTubers, chopped it up and everything. Cool guy, like like a YouTube friend. All right, we're in the, he's in the DM saying, "Yo, I love the streams. I love the streams." I reply, "Why you want my dick?" Oh, I do remember that. I do you know what I'm saying? And then he said he was gonna like. Yeah, yeah. R-word my girl, he's like, I'm gonna come and like fight you. Like he just went fucking crazy, put my government name, put seven stories, trying to fucking ruin my reputation. Mm -hmm. Right? He Steezy's saying he's friends with him. I'm saying, what do you think about it? And Steezy's like, oh no. Kind of taking inaction. I mean, that was crazy by him. I don't you think that's at what point do you cut off a friend? That's the question. At what point does someone show their character and you said, no, I can't fuck with you anymore? When do you prioritize yourself and cut yourself off from negative people? But he wasn't negative to Steezy. Why would he not be negative to Steezy if he did that shit to me? Because Steezy isn't telling him to get off his dick. That's a joke, bro. I know, but he didn't take it as a joke. Okay, what is stopping him from not taking something as a joke again? Clearly, I had no malicious intent. I mean, would you cut someone off because of something they did to someone else that had nothing to do with you? Yeah. If they, to your friend, like the, the relationship that me and Brandon had is exactly the same that Brandon has with Steezy. It's no mm -hmm. different. He has less subs. He likes both of our videos and admires us. Wants clout, an attention whore. I mean, but what you're saying is hypothetical. I mean, I know it already happened to you, but... Do Don't you, you think that shows character? Like Doesn't that show your character? This doesn't set off alarms in your head? Not to the point that I would cut him off. I feel like situational, bro. Saying you're going to R-word my girlfriend? You said that? Yes. Yes. That's a little crazy, yeah. Literally, word for word, I'm going to R-word your girlfriend on his fucking public Instagram story. I thought it was a joke. I laughed too when I saw it. How the fuck can someone say something that crazy? And I called him up and he's like, whoa, I thought you were serious about why you on my dick. He literally thought it was beef. Oh my God, but Chad, it, do you see what I'm talking it, about? Beef, it doesn't anything go? Bro, why would you think that's beef? Cause I said, why you on my dick? The fact that somebody who you think is your friend could flip like that yeah, no, and turn right, friendship right, into right. beef? You're right, you're what right. What the you're fuck? You're right, you're right, you're right. I was just sure, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. He's crazy though. That's like one circumstance. He's just a weirdo. That's some school shooter vibes, bro. Yeah, he's a That's weirdo. some white boy school shooter shit. The fact that you, uh, what? He did say some crazy shit for now. That's no insane. Like, no. insane, get off my dick, isn't that crazy? To no, it's crazy not. That's friend. an internet joke. Why you on my dick, bro? It's I say that shit to you every day. But I'm saying, like, even if you said that seriously, that still isn't, like, warranted to... No, bro, yeah. nothing warrants saying I'm going to R-word your girlfriend. Yeah, nothing. Nothing, nothing right. warrants that. You're right, you're right, you're right. That was some weirdo shit. And I can't be like, hey, yo, but that's what the internet is. It's just like you could just take a passive approach. Stuff you say online, people don't take it seriously. Oh, okay. No. Nah. Chad, WRL, talk to me. Look at that. They agree. Yeah, no, nah, you're right. You're right on that one. But I'm telling you, Chad, the reason I'm talking about this is because internet has diluted a lot of the basic respect that we need to have as people. A lot of people need to step outside and realize what they're saying. And because of YouTube, because of this, it's all content. Nothing, you can say whatever the fuck anymore and it doesn't matter. Oh, okay, I'll just delete it off my story. What? It surprised me that I know so many YouTubers that fuck with him still, and they're like, Muh. Hooligan Christian, Ricky, and everything. How does that not set up alarms in your head? Chat, thank you for saying W. Look at that. They agree. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right on that one. Internet has fucked people's heads up, chat. This is why I'm talking about it. You got more beer? Man, put my government name up. Watching him say all those lies about me and get away with it made me go insane, but I'm out of the psych ward, so let's wrap this video up. The lies Nico spread about me caused me to face a massive backlash on social media, extreme mental duress, and even resulted in me having to change my phone number because of the daily harassment I received about being a rapist. In regards to me putting his government name out there, I'd like to clarify it's as easy as googling Sneeko Wikipedia to find his real name. He tells everyone his name is Hubert and even has a poster on his wall that says Life of Hubert with a picture of his face as a child. It's pretty bizarre to me. He lives in this fairy tale world I don't really understand. 
so let's conclude the video. I want to make it very clear I have nothing against homosexuality whatsoever. I do not judge people based on their sexuality, and it's best to be honest with yourself as well as not live in fear of others' opinions. I think living a double life that makes you unhappy because you're afraid of people's opinions is very sad. So with that said, I found this clip of Sneeko talking about modeling and how gay men run the industry. What's like one thing you learned about that like modeling world like that you didn't know before you joined it? It's 99% um, of the fashion world derives from gay men. Even yeah. women's clothing, it all is because gay men yeah. run fashion. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I wish that straight people should, <laughs> could fuck as much as they do. <laughs> like, we, we need a grinder. We need a grinder <laughs> for straight. Why does that not exist? Like, because there's a bunch of weird men. So, okay, sorry. So you, One you, day. you've noticed that uh, gay people run fashion. That's what you noticed. Yeah, you think it's people like Kanye and stuff, but they, yeah. they run everything. Yeah. They decide what... That's why like most female models are kind of built like 12 year old boys. Think about it. Like why, why has only Fashion Nova, what's, what's the Instagram thing? Fashion Nova, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the first time you see thick, thick bitches in modeling. The rest of it is like skinny, slender, like, like this like jawline. They kind of look like boys. Aliens. Like, alien looking like Jeffree Star looking boys. That's because that's what gay men, that's what gay men like. They run fashion, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Interesting. And I do, I, I mean, I gotta admit, I fit in that category. I kind of look like a handsome lesbian. Like, handsome I, I, lesbian, I know what yeah. it is. I know what curious it is. Curious George. <laughs> <laughs> By Curious George. By Curious George. Oh, fuck. It got me wondering, is Sneeko just a furious, closeted gay man? Then I saw this photo of him with his face on someone's ass, and I really want to know, is this a girl or a guy? I looked everywhere to find photos of him modeling with a girl, and I just could not find who this model is. Sneeko, whose ass is your face on in this photo? Next, I found this photo of Sneeko wearing girls' clothes as a child. He also says he used to wear his sister's high heels growing up. Have you ever worn or fantasized about wearing clothes of another sex? Um, I mean, I've wore high heels before. Chat, bro, come on, bro. Does that make me gay if I put on some high heels? If I put on my sister's high... My sister did a makeover. Chat, you've done a makeover with a bitch before, right? I've worn some of my girls' clothes, like, satirically... Does that make me gay? Chad, shut the fuck up, bro. You've put on heels before, bro. Then I found this stream where Sneeko takes a gay test and admits to being sexually attracted to men and fighting his homosexual thoughts. All right, chat. How gay am I? Have you ever looked at a person of the same sex and felt attracted in a sexual way? Um, I'm going to say, chat, we're being honest. We're being honest. It's happened. And then, and you're not, bro, you're fucking lying. Thank you for the 10, Jude. I'm going to do more advice in the future. You're lying if you've never had that thought while looking at someone of the same sex. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Someone, else, okay, 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 okay. This whole shit is AO. I know I'm digging myself a hole. If you played the game too, it'd be AO. But if we're being honest, I know I'm not alone here. You've had that mental thing where like, you're like, hmm, that guy's kind of good. Whoa, whoa, chill, bro. Whoa, what the fuck? Whoa, stop, stop, stop. Bro, stop. Just, you know, no one can relate to that. You've not been like, hmm, that guy has a nice beard. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck? Whoa, stop, brain. Chill, look at the girl. Never? Really? Okay, I'm just lying. I'm Okay, thank you, Bleep. Yeah, you've done that. Okay, I'm not capping on this stream. Fuck you. All right, fuck you. Very rarely. Sneeko then showed disgust at his best friend being on Grindr and being a closeted homosexual. If your best friend confessed to you that he is gay, you would feel delighted and welcome him in the crib, get excited and start flirting, make a joke about it, tell him that you sometimes feel attracted to the same sex too. They didn't even put my answer on here. Chat, this shit happened to me recently, yo. This shit happened. One of my closest friends left to, he left his phone in my car, right? It's 2 a.m. I'm, I'm back at the crib. I pick up, like, I realized halfway through the ride, I'm like, oh, shit, he left his phone. I pick up his phone from the, from the passenger seat. I look up. Two notifications from Grinder chat. He had two notifications from Grinder. No, not Cass, not Cass. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say, but it wasn't Cass. And I didn't know what to do. I'm like, bro, it must be like he's trying to get some drugs. He's trying to like pick up some shit or like, or maybe Grindr's just an app that, and bro, Grindr's just a gay app. 
I was making excuses. Like immediately, I'm just like, no, no, no. He can't, bro, he's not gay. What? He's not gay. What? No. He probably downloaded Grindr by mistake. This is probably just, his phone is hacked. And then I brought it up to my girl. I'm like, is he gay? She's like, yeah, he's gay. I'm like, nah, he's not gay. He's not gay. I'm not going to bring it up. That's the option that I'm clicking. Just ignore it and keep pretending that he's straight. <laughs> I'm not bringing it up, bro. <laughs> I don't want, I don't, I want to keep living in the lie. Why is that not an option? Keep living in the lie. I don't want him to come out. If he don't want to come out to me, I'm not going to bring it up. Sneeko wants to keep living in the lie. Make a joke about it. That's kind of what I'm doing. He then admits to going to gay bars because girls at gay bars aren't afraid of testosterone alpha males, which really doesn't add up in my head, but I'm not the type of guy to frequent gay bars, so I can't really speak for Sneeko. Your friends decided to go party at a gay bar. I've been to gay bars, chat. I'm not even lying, I've been to gay bars. It was funny seeing like men, they, they were twerking on the pole, they had glitter on their back and the glitter was shaking off and their back was hairy. It was funny, but I went, I went. Bro, no, come on chat, relax. In Brooklyn, some of the gay bars are the best. That's where you could find all the threesome bitches, bro. No one's afraid of like alpha male, like testosterone guys at a gay bar. Bro, come on, bro. The gay bar, there's, yo, yo, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, chat. There's mad bitches at the gay bar. There's mad bitches at the gay bar. You, you guys are all fucking capping, bro. There's mad bitches at the gay bar. And then you blend in and they feel safe and then... Come on, nah, get the... Bro, you really have never been to any... Like, bro, bro, come on, bro. You, you're not in tune, bro. Fuck. This answer is crazy. Feels like you're going home. Let's go party. Why did they write it like that? Get excited to check out a new venue. This, this one... This one would be true, but I've been to gay bars, so I can't confidently say that. I've been, and I don't want to say get excited because I'm not excited, but why is there, there should be a fifth choice. Oh, fuck it, bro. Fuck. When asked if he'd be comfortable with a gay colleague flirting with him at work, he answers he would feel very awkward about it, and that's fine. But with that said, I believe it's fair for me to say what I'm about to say. Keep in mind, Sneeko says the entire situation started because I couldn't handle a gay joke. He's insinuating I'm uncomfortable with my sexuality. One gay joke? Hey, get off my dick. So after doing some digging, I very unfortunately found photos of Sneeko stroking his penis in front of what I can only assume is a male photographer. Now to me, these look like professional photos. There's obviously lighting involved and it's very apparent his penis is in his hand. I can't show it on YouTube, but I'll post it on my Twitter. Given the context of Sneeko saying that gay men run the modeling industry, you can only assume that a gay man is taking the photos, but we don't know that for a fact. So Sneeko, please prove me wrong. Prove this isn't a man's ass and prove these photos were not taken by a gay man. You stand for the truth, let's see the truth. I literally had to sign up to a gay website to get these photos. It was jaw crazy, ma. Also, just so you guys know at home, this is already public information. I did nothing illegal to obtain these photographs and I'm not breaking any laws by posting these photographs. I'd love to hear Sneeko's reasoning for why these photographs exist and who took them. This is the ultimate New York pause. But to be honest, no, fake flirting doesn't count. Fake flirting doesn't count. I'd feel awkward about it. So let's get this clear. Sneeko doesn't want gay guys flirting with him. He just wants to stroke his penis in front of them on camera. What's with this guy in voyeurism? Good God, Sneeko. He also said in a world with no people left except men, he would let them suck his dick. 60% through. Fuck it. Okay, I'm not looking at the chat anymore. <sighs> Fuck. If there weren't... Folks, stop, bro, stop putting the emojis. If there were no people left in the world except for someone of the same sex, you would... Fall into despair after you would never have a sexual partner again. Bro, chat, let's be honest though. If there's only two people left, bro, someone's got to get their dick sucked. I'm just saying, bro. You just not going to get your dick sucked anymore? Bro? We got all... It's not going to be me. It's not... How gay is it if I... I'm just saying. If there's, no, chat, relax. If there's only two people left, if there's only two people left, 
I'm closing my eyes and getting my dick sucked. I'm sorry. If that makes me gay, bro, fuck it. You can say what you want. I'm closing my eyes and getting some head. I'm not going to be the gift, but I'm saying there's two of you. One's sucking, one's getting. I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm being honest. I'm being honest, chat. Yo, you would just never get head again? Would you just never get head again, chat? And in an apocalyptic world where there's only one woman left, guess what he would do to her? Do you think what Speed said was bad? I, I, re I knew as soon as he clipped that part, exactly the part he was going to get canceled for. I saw it in like a Speed Funny Moments montage. I'm like, oh, that shit's probably why he got banned. The who goes stop? That's a good point. Just because he said it loud and aggressive, she felt all hurt. But if they were the last two, bro, you are getting fucked. There's no option about it. Whether you want to or not, you're getting fucked. If there's two people, there's no consent. There's no police. Are you kidding me? It's happening. Bro, that, sound it, is, it's, that sounded okay. so that's evil, bro. That's the twitch bro. in you. That's the twitch in you. That that sounded sounds evil. so... What it the sounds fuck? evil, but it's true. If there's a man and a woman left, they are fucking... Bro, that's they are it. fucking. It's oh, so my you, you sound like a straight supervillain right now. You sound like a straight ass super bro. Not even Lex Luthor, not even the Joker would fucking rape some girl. I could have like, said it. I could have You're said a it. whole ass super villain, bro. If I said it in a common voice, you would have been like, huh, good point. If I said, if there was only two, if I said it like Jordan Peterson, if there were two people left on earth, whether or not like the rules of good son, eventually they would have to procreate. Now it sounds fine, but that's the same thing, bro. Like, if the girl doesn't want to fuck you, then she. No, there's no, no, what do you mean she doesn't want to, what do you, who's going to stop? Who's going to stop it? Brother, you're raping her. So, okay, and there's only two people left. There's no police. There's no laws, no court. Rape isn't a thing. Yes, it is. Nope. nope. There's no laws if the fucking government's dead. If the police is dead and there's nobody else, laws don't exist. It's just okay, two people. Uh, that's, that's, that's weird, bro. It's true, though. Bro, if the girl doesn't want to fuck you, then she doesn't want to fuck you. Jack off. <laughs> At that point, it's not even about. Wait, 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 wait. I thought alpha males. Uh, I thought alpha males don't have to force themselves on girls. So why do you have to? Why I'm would you have to rape a girl? I'm not, I'm, it's I'm not just, about force. It's just it, it's going. It literally, happen. you literally just said who's gonna stop you. So it's literally force. It's literally force, so you can't say it's not about force when it literally is. But if you're the last bro, two on earth, like she's bro, gonna want here, to Sneeko, She gonna want Sneeko, to. Sneeko. Okay, you could have been like, yeah, bro, I'm gonna riz her up, bro. She's gonna fall in love bro, with me. You don't me. need to yeah. riz up if you're the last two. What, what, what do you need to riz her up for? Oh, let's go on a date. What? It's just you two. You have to. Bro. Ain't no sounded, riz. That just sounded so bad, bro. Yeah, it sounds bad in the context of people and laws and society. But when that doesn't exist, post-apocalyptic world, two people, it is what it is. Man, if nuclear bombs ever drop, Sneeko is not the guy you want around. He's either raping you or making you suck his dick. That shit is jaw crazy, boy. That's crazy as hell. The results of Sneeko's gay test are in, and it says he's nearly 50% bisexual. He sits back in utter shock silently for over half a minute, then says he could have lied. What? I mean, I could have lied. Chad, I could have lied. After this, he asks himself, am I gay? then goes into denial and fights his chat, even threatening to hide them. It's still majority straight chat. That's 52%. 52% I'm majority straight. Get the fuck out of here. The gay shit is only four. The gay is a four. You only bisexual if it overrides the straight. Nah, don't buy sneak bro. Am I gay? Nah, no, I, bro, what? Yo, chat, that's not, stop with the, stop with the emojis, stop with the emojis. The, stop, 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 that's not, that's not fucking funny, bro. I'm below average gay! Chat, I'm below average, get the fuck out of here! The average is 18.84% gay! I'm four!
Fuck. Nah, shut up. I'm in the bro. Uh, I'm in the top percentile. What do you mean? I'm winning. Fuck. Stop with the emoji. Stop. I'm gonna hide the chat. It. Fuck. Fuck, yo, stop saying Yas Queen. It's not funny, bro. Am I still allowed to do my gay voice? Or is that, I gotta retire that? Jesus Christ, man. Then you take the, ch bro, you take the test and be honest then. If I'm such a fucking, Jesus Christ. Sneeko says this is ruining his reputation and does what he always does, illogically writes it off as ironic, a joke, and stupid. Bro, stop putting the flag. Stop putting the rainbow. They're gonna, they're, you're, 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 bro, you're really ruining my rep. Someone's gonna clip this, bro. Someone's. Fuck. It, it doesn't, bro, it's just some dumb test on the internet. I didn't even want to play this. You made me fucking play this game. It's meant to be funny, right? It's, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. It's not even serious, man. It's it's meant to it's meant to be like, haha, look how gay he is. Right? It's like no one's gonna be a hundred percent straight. It's like a spectrum. Why is the US the gayest country? This was this was all ironic from the start. Yeah, ha ha, yo, yo, whoever clipped the stream, the chats were all we're all on the joke together. Ha ha, imagine if I was gay. LOL, yeah, yeah. We're just joking, we're just joking, we're just joking, we're just joking. Don't put different color nails, bro. Don't put the diverse nails, that's crazy. We're just joking, haha. -ha. Yeah, yeah, imagine if Sneeko was gay. Ah, uh, whoa, what? Whoa, I'm gay? Haha, <laughs> yeah, I'm part of the joke. I'm part of it, I'm part of it. Ha ha, ha ha. Yeah, this is just something stupid. I was being ironic the whole time. I was just, I was being ironic the whole time. I'm, I'm part, I'm laughing with you. LMAO, LOL, emojis. I'm part of it. I'm part of it. I'm part of it. Twink. Twinko's crazy, bro. That's. Twinko then questions if this is his coming out video. He really thinks about confessing here. His first thought is, will his friends still be his friends if he comes out? Which is an absolute crazy and fucked up thought. Is this my coming out video? Bro, fuck. I'm never really gonna live this down, right? This is never gonna go away. This is part of the digital footprint forever. Oh, shit. I'm gonna hear something from my girl. I'm gonna hear something from all my... If they're still friends with me after this. Sneeko then ponders how he can get out of it and clings to it being a joke once more and even admits bi is gay. Ha 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 yeah, imagine if, imagine if I'm gay. Yeah, ha 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 Gabriel, that's not funny, that's not funny. That's not funny. I can't answer that question, cause, cause I'm, I'm like. Ha ha, I'm straight though. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha, yeah, slay, uh, imagine. That's so funny. If it was true, but I'm not. LMAO. Fuck, bro, how do I get out of this? Um, fuck, shit. Oh, fuck. Okay, move it. I don't care. It's just a joke, bro. You don't support me. I'm not, bro, I... <laughs> It's just a test. Yeah, it's subjective. Right. It's just a test. Yo, you got the right idea. Yeah, we were just joking the whole time. I'm not bi, bro. Bi is gay. Shut the fuck up. He then finishes by hiding his chat and fleeing to his Discord where they will be on his side about him not being gay. He cannot handle the truth. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. I'm going to go to the Discord. They, they definitely are they're on my side. It's just a test, right? Yeah, it's just a test. Who cares? 
and it doesn't even matter bro it, it doesn't even if i would if i was gay and i'm not it wouldn't even matter because like why did, would you care about my sexuality in the first place it doesn't even so is that what this is all about? Is he uncomfortable about his sexuality and it's causing him to act insane? Did he think I wasn't going to let him watch when I ran a train on Maria? Does he actually want to fuck me? Sneeko, listen, sweetheart. We know you love pedo movies like cuties and are into weird sex parties, but please, just be gay, man. It's fine. Making up rape accusations is way worse than being homosexual. Just be honest with yourself. Have some humility and you'll feel a lot better. I'll finish the video up with this clip. And that fucking they, them girl... Turn yourself in and spend a night in jail. You deserve it. For all the guys who were falsely accused of shit they didn't do by bitches who were lying like you, go to jail right now. Feel bad. I know you won't. I know you're watching this too, bro. It's nice having like a little bit of clout now because they, they all watch this. You should be ashamed of yourself. Think about all the women who actually got essayed. And now the next time that's going to happen, the next time the cops show up, maybe they're going to give him a hard time. And it actually did happen. And they're going to give that girl a hard time because of your lying ass. Think about the man next time he's going to be in this situation. He's going to be rude to the next girl because of you. Because you're a liar. You should feel bad for yourself. Pretty interesting, isn't it? And I want to say I could have made this video 48 hours long. 90% of what I researched is not included in this video. But in my opinion, it's time to finish it. So that's it. That's the dark truth about Sneeko. Thank you guys for watching. We'll get back to a regular programming very soon. I have a diss track coming. So be on the lookout for that diss track music video. Shout out RxK Nephew and Christ Dillinger. Thank you guys. Peace. This feminist garbage hides the fact that she's attracted to that guy making the videos. It is what it is. Girls, you could vouch for it. You know it's true. She would. She would. And you know, sister, what's so predictable? You could tell by the way she's talking that she hasn't been properly mm -mm in a long time. It's been a while. So she's on the internet making this garbage video, promoting all this feminist garbage to your fucking lonely girls in the comment section. What you really need, Chad Chad, is some mm, 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 mm. Yeah, shut up. Shut up with your feminism. Yeah, come here. Come here. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. And she's gonna go, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah. ha. That's what you need. You need some sense fuck back into you. And you know what they're gonna do right after I did that? They're gonna clip that part and say, I'm an incel problematic, but you know it's true. You can hear it in her voice. She hasn't been properly <clears throat> in too long. And now you make no sense. That's what happens, man. Monica, I just wanna take your bun in a fist and then slam it down like I'm mashing butter, but like horizontally, Monica, like that's the level that's how you make me feel. It's just something about your dumb mouth that I want to... It's something. Like, when you talk, I just can't think about... The, okay, chill out. All right. Chill, 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 chill. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. That was... I've just been so emotional recently. I have not been taking my birth control. I think I'm an empath and all the, the negativity has just been getting to me. That wasn't me, that was my father. And I'm learning and I'm growing. I did not mean to say that I would grab her bun and smash her head up and down like I'm mashing butter onto my crotch. I didn't mean to say that. Everyone thought I was a pussy growing up because I'm Asian. And you, you, you dealt with that, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I remember like uh, me and Cass used to go to this, this bar, or you still kind of go. But we used to go to this bar and like he would always pick up girls there and I was like, how the fuck do you do it? It was just like trash ass bar, like trashy as fuck. Everyone fucked up. And I would go there with like a couple beers and like I do okay in the dating world, but I never could pick up a girl that I'm like, what's your secret? So just get drunk. Literally. Get drunk. And then the next, shame. literally the next time I got hammered, bro. I went with these soccer kids and they're doing shots all night. Like the bartender's getting involved. Like classic white boy wasted. When I was the angry kid making internet rants and yelling about my political views, Girls didn't give a shit, but once I realized all you have to do is shower and not talk weird, I can get laid, which is awesome. But in the famous words of one of the greatest of all time, Lil Wayne, as soon as I come, I come to my senses. Yeah, I might have gotten laid a couple times, but who cares? Nothing ever came from it. I never had a meaningful relationship. Then I also found out to get the same awesome feeling you get when a video goes viral, you can just go to a party and get high. His favorite film is... He tells offensive jokes, calls you a bum based on your political views, is an uncensored, unfiltered, and transparent polyamorous nihilist, 
who has had conflicts with Hassan, Brandon Buckingham, D'Angelo Wallace, Hamza, Young Don the Sauce God, and every white girl on Twitter. He's a racist, homophobic, fat-shaming albiest who Damn. has probably been canceled 20 times by now for being controversial. And we not gonna stop chat. They gonna keep on canceling me, but we ain't going nowhere. Yo. Yo, what up? I don't know if you've seen yet, but uh, Mr. Buckingham is dropping a big exposed video on you tomorrow, man. Because he, he's saying that you lied and said that you, uh, he said he wanted to R-word your girlfriend. He said he wanted to pull up and run a train on my girl. He said me and the whole gang are going to run a train on your girl. Okay, but you said that you, but you said he said he R word her. That's two different things. Yeah, pulling up with the gang and saying you're going to run a train on my girl who obviously is not attracted to him. That's the R word, bro. Bro, but you can't just throw the R word out like that. Like, bro, that's like false accusations. Okay, so what does that mean? Like, me and the gang are going to pull up and run a train on your girl. What is that? But that's like me saying, like, bro, if you keep on talking shit, I'm going to fuck your bitch. That doesn't mean, like, I'm actually going to do it. It's just talking shit. Okay, talking shit by threatening R word. That's not the same as R word. And, like, I'm not I'm not going to agree with that. Oh, okay, maybe not. But it wouldn't be consensual. Like, she doesn't want that. And he lied and said, like, my girl, my, she was giving me the eyes of dinner and stuff like that. I'm going to pull up and, like, gangbang with it, run a train on her. And he was threatening me with that. Like, maybe it wasn't our word, but he was threatening me with that. And it's like, my girl would not be down to do that. Hold on, let me, let me clear something up for the chat real quick. One, that dude lied and said that my girl was giving him eyes at the dinner, which obviously that wasn't happening. I met this guy in real life, we had dinner, and then he went and talked all this crazy shit. Guy's a pure cloud chaser, beginning to bottom. Like, that's what they all do. And the fact that you don't see that, Jadeon, like the reason he's making this video now is because he's up and he's trying to get attention by my name being up. I get a new exposed video about me every single day. The best thing is to not acknowledge this and not acknowledge cloud chasers, which this guy is, obviously. So him making this whole video, what are you going to expose me for? Saying that I lied? Bro, you threatened to run it. You, my girl obviously wouldn't want to go near you. That's what it is. It wouldn't be consensual if you run up and pull up to my city and run a train on my girl. That's crazy talk. I'm not gonna go. It, I'm not gonna ever associate with these type of people anymore. And, and I'm warning you, to Dion. Like, I can see through it. I know what this type of person is. I know that character. And trust me, if he did that to me, it's likely he will do that to you. That's what I was talking about with CZ on my stream. And that's why he's making that video now. I dropped that stream like two months ago. He's making it now because I'm up. To answer what you said about that, he saw what you said two months ago, and he even called me about it. But to like let it slide but like bro when i tell you like this shit's been eating at him for like months because bro i'm not gonna lie if someone said said i said like was, was trying to r word somebody i'll be pissed too like how would you feel if someone like bro what then what is that if he's saying he's gonna pull up and run a train on my girl with the whole okay the bro sneeko you said that you were gonna impregnate uh brett were you being serious? Consensually. It break, that's that's consensual. Not running a train on my girl while trying to fight me. Me talking about Brett is me sipping for her. Well, here. You know what? I'm, like, talking to both of you. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna, the video is dropping tomorrow. I'm going to react to the video. And then after that, I'm going to talk to him. Then I'm going to talk to you. And if you guys want, we can I can put you guys on a call together. I don't want to talk to this dude because me talking to him is him being up right now. The guy's irrelevant, and he wants to be relevant by talking and threatening bigger YouTubers. That's all he cares about. Well, his last video just got a million views. What did? His last video he posted, like, a week ago got a million views. All right. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, so he's, he's doing good. Yeah. Bro, weirdo. Like, literally school shooter vibes from this dude. That check, does he not give you school shooter energy? Here, just do this. That guy's a weirdo, right? Fucking bozo, right? You heard? Bro, just, whenever he drops the video, just expose him then. Bro, I'm, not, I'm never going to acknowledge these people again. Look, Gideon, that's the same thing that happens to the Twitter mob. They watch one clip, and they make develop their whole, whole opinions based on that. But now we need to pay attention to long form. That's why it's so easy to brainwash people, because our attention spans are terrible. We see one clip and make assumptions. I'm not going to watch this video, and I would never want to speak to this person again. He showed true character, and I think that...
hateful when you see someone show true character you should be aware of it because the guy has a lot of like i think it's it like it's just just lost in masculinity stuff like that saying i'm a fake alpha male i've never even said i was an alpha male i want to spread truth yeah go ahead go ahead I feel like just putting it as, oh, he's cloud chasing is just like kind of like sweeping it under the rug. Yeah. All right, you guys, check this out. This is a great example of how much of a liar and manipulator Sneeko is. Watch this clip. And then this was after like he felt bad about it because I guess you guys talked on the phone for a little bit. And he was asking me like. He didn't apologize. He didn't apologize. And I think that's an example of somebody that just lives for attention. Here he explicitly says on Jadon's stream that I never apologized to him. He said this to try to convince Jadon that I'm a bad person and like a bad friend, right? That's what that's the angle he was going for. Is that I wasn't sorry. He was using it to manipulate Jadon. And then the same day, like one hour later, to try to manipulate Keemstar, he claims that I did apologize. He just said on Jadon's stream that I didn't apologize to try to trick Jadon. Now he's on Twitter telling Keemstar that I did apologize to try to prove that I know my wrongdoing. Think about that. This is the guy that brings truth. The guy will say anything to bend the truth and try to get his narrative across depending on who he's talking to and the time and place. I don't understand how people can literally prey on someone doing bad. And that's exactly what they do. And it's just so evil. How it's much hate fault. do you have to have in your heart? To even so it is it? hate in their heart. But one thing I realized is that it's not their fault. They are told yeah. that this is the right thing to do. They are told it's that. It's not their fault. What about accountability? They don't have you accountability. You always say women need accountability. They do. They need it. Way? But I also I say it's not their fault. But it's their, it, they've been brainwashed and they don't even realize it. We need to work together. Put your ego to the side. Follow God, what would God want us to do? He would want us to beat the evil. And I know all of you know, the world is run by evil people. The world is run by demons. Put your ego to the side and let's fight back. You gonna let the Clintons and Zuckerberg win? You gonna let these people who fucking sacrifice kids and suck up blood on an island with billionaires doing these rituals, put it on a map? You gonna let them win? We gotta fight back. Here is a man who would not take it anymore. Suck on this. I walk in this bitch like Travis Bickle. No, I gotta make an example. Said some shit that you couldn't handle. All of my dick like a flame to a candle. Made up rape, now I'ma go Rambo. Sneak was a cuck, making up scandals. Andrew's fake, fuck his whole channel. Danny's gay, sucking dicks as they dangle. Gang, ice. Shit is cold. Might slap that boy whenever I see him. His girl's on my dick. Her name is Maria. I fucked her raw without a condom. Sneaker he watched without a problem. Next he asked if I could fuck him. I said, no, bro, you a dumb Damn. bitch. If I did fuck him, it wouldn't be gay. Cause he got a pussy, he know how to lay. Damn, that gay shit, that ain't my business. 30 days, 30 thigh with it. Niggas moving weird and be proud with it. Knock on your dog, girl, scout with it. In the game chair in the house with it. Niggas be moving like some house niggas. Bro said he taking invitations. We eat your ass, ain't no friendly fading. Go real life UFC 4. Speak on my name. Won't speak no more. Really so crack out of store. I be really sneaking with the pole. Sneak through the front and the side door. Nigga, fuck my bitch and you can have it. Hold the pole, nigga, freezing like a statue. Please pay me all my collateral. Finally famous, he on the news. They insecure and they confused. They're like, goddamn, what the fuck he can't lose? She like, what's your name? I'm like, Swoosh!